today, we are gonna see, Rimuru, got true love, so let's move on to the video. Everyone had never seen Rimuru with such anger. When Xion and the other Hobgoblins were murdered by the Pharmas army, Rimuru was angry, but not to the point of losing control. This one is different, everyone was shocked at the amount of aura he released out of anger. Any normal monster or human would have been dead on the spot if they were near Rimuru. That's why when he teleported and went straight to the enemy's lair, everyone prepared for the demon lord summons. For Rimuru, the only thing that mattered at that time was retrieving his dragon. The fury and rage he felt cannot even be described in words. Nothing matters. No one matters. Chances of success? He does not give a fuck. His enemies will be dead as soon as he's done with them. As soon as he devoured Voldora's body and obtained true dragon seed, his anger immediately dissipated. Voldora is now safe, and their soul corridors had been re-established. Rimuru focused his consciousness on the imaginary space to talk to Voldora. Are you okay, Voldora? Rimuru asked, his heart still pounding hard from the stress he experienced when their soul corridor was destroyed. Kuahahahe, <laughs> of course, I am fine. You saved me again, Rimuru, as expected of my sworn friend. Voldora laughed. This guy cannot really read the atmosphere. You idiot, didn't I tell you to be careful? Rimuru can't help but yell at him. He does not know whether to punch his face or hug the hell out of him. His emotions are all over the place. He was angry at Voldora for his carelessness, but he is also relieved and happy that he was safe and sound. Voldora finally realized how terrified Rimuru must have been with this whole fiasco. I'm okay, really, so stop being a worwart. You even managed to defeat my physical body and my sister. So this is your victory. You saved everyone, Voldora said, trying to comfort him. No one in history had managed to defeat two true dragons, since they were deemed the strongest beings. They were deities. But then, Rimuru happened, making history. Once I release you, I will make sure to punch you hard. Rimuru threatened. Voldora laughed, glad to feel that Rimuru is calming down. He really plans to make it up to him, but he will not tell him that. He smirked. He will make sure this will be one hell of a makeup. Rimuru then focused on the reports he received from his executives from Thought Communication. Looks like the battle is done and they were just wrapping up. That's good, Rimuru thought. He's really glad that he had such reliable comrades. It looks like Rigard and Shuna are already arranging a victory party in Tempest. He can't help but look forward to the event. He wanted to make sure everyone will enjoy their time after this tiring battle. Saui, Benimaru, Diablo, gather everyone and return to the city to rest. I will follow you, I just have an important thing to do. Rimuru instructed. As you wish, my lord Diablo said, although it sounds like he wanted to ask where he is going. He kept his mouth shut. Good decision, because Rimuru is not in the mood yet to deal with his antics. With that, Rimuru teleported himself to the sealed cave where Voldora was originally sealed and released him. As soon as Voldora's physical body, in human form, materialized in front of him, Rimuru wasted no time and launched at him to punch the hell out of his stupid dragon. But of course Voldora is already expecting it, and caught his fist immediately and caged Rimuru's body in his arms, embracing him. Let go of me, you bastard. The demon lord demanded. Despite evolving, Voldora's strength is still 10x more than his so. It's no wonder he cannot budge out of his grip. You deserve to be punched, after all the stress you've given me. Do you know how painful it was for me to watch you be taken by the enemy? Do you know how painful it was when I felt our soul corridor destroyed? I was so scared Rimuru can't help but cry out his frustration. He kept hitting Voldora's chest, despite knowing it's not even hurting the man. What else could he do though? Voldora just let him vent it out and accepted the hit. He knew it was difficult for Rimuru, and he vowed to make it up to him. When will you ever learn to be careful? I cannot do this every single time. I do not think my heart can take it. So, please please be more careful. Rimuru pleaded. By this time, he grew tired of hitting him and just settled himself in his arms. This is his rightful place. Voldora just smiled and cupped his face and kissed his lips tenderly. Rimuru just closed his eyes and accepted it. He knew that this was Voldora's way of apologizing. This stupid man is not good with words. He'll just ruin it as soon as he opened his mouth. The tender kisses started traveling from his lips to his jaw, down to his neck. He tilted his neck to give him more access. For some reason, Rimuru can feel everything intensely. Every kiss, every touch, it felt like it was burning on his skin. He loved it. His sense of smell improved greatly too. He can smell Voldora and it is intoxicating. Is this a true dragon thing? Answer. Yes. Since Master evolved as a true dragon subspecies, your senses have now been heightened as well. 
Seal answered. So, that's why. Ramiro can't help but be addicted to his smell. He wanted more. Dot following his instinct, he dove his face to Voldora's neck and sniffed him. He wrapped his arms around Voldora's shoulder, in an attempt to keep him in place. Voldora knew what is going on and just let him do as he pleases. They have all night. Considering how their souls have connected already, Ramiro being a true dragon subspecies, made him eligible to be a true dragon's mate. It's not always like that. Being a true dragon's mate can be achieved in many ways, it's just that, there were not many records of it, since everyone knew it was an impossible feat. Ramuru is in heaven, his mind is full of Voldora and his scent. Is there such thing as being scent drunk? Answer. Yes, for true dragons, scent drunkenness can only happen if one is intoxicated by their mate's scent. Master cannot get scent drunk with other people's scent. Seal informed him. Wait what? Ramuru is confused. Mate? Master an individual. Voldora had already soul bonded, and with Master obtaining true dragon's seed, by devouring Storm Dragon's physical body, you are now eligible to officially mate him. That made Ramuru more confused. How do dragons mate anyway? But before Seal could answer him, Voldora cut in. Why are you frowning like that? Voldora inquired, curious. Ramuru then shifted his attention to him, and decided to ask him instead. Seal said I could officially mate you. What does that mean? Ramuru asked. Voldora's eyes widened. I mean, this is not something they should be talking about at this time. They should be making up. Mating is a serious matter, and they should be talking about it. When their heads are not messed with desire. Seriously, Ramuru, of all times, you decided to ask me that right now. Voldora can't help but whine. Is mating a bad thing? A.N. I mean regardless of how much porn Satoru Mikami had read in his previous life he is in a different world. The hell he knows about how things work. No, no. It is a good thing. Very good, actually. But it can change everything, Voldora said. Not realizing Voldora's internal dilemma, Ramuru decided to push it. If it's a very good thing, then tell me Ramuru demanded. They both already know that they are in a relationship not as friends, not as brothers, but as lovers. But Ramuru wanted to do it if there was a way to make it more official. After today's event, he wanted to make sure no one can take Voldora from him again. Mating is a sacred ritual done to bond an individual to a true dragon. Voldora started to explain while brushing his hands to his hair. He sounds frustrated. That means, if we go through that, your soul will be intertwined with mine. Unlike the soul corridor that just connects us, mating basically puts our souls together. No one will be able to destroy the soulbind unless one of the other pairs dies, which is impossible considering the infinite lifespan of true dragons. Then does that mean if anyone attempts to break through the soul corridor, it would be impossible after mating? That is correct. Once the mating ritual is completed, the soul corridor will be synthesized and merged with the soul bond. Magic attack or any form of attack directed to the soulbind will bounce back to the caster. Soulbinds cannot be destroyed. Seal answered. Then let's do it. Ramuru decided. Voldora just looked at him as if Ramuru grew two heads. Why are you looking at me like that? Ramuru questioned. Do you even know what you're signing up to? Voldora asked, genuinely frustrated at the situation. He wanted to do it. There is no question about that. But he does not want Ramuru to regret it. He does does not want to cage Ramuru in an eternal commitment. He knew not everything lasts forever. His love for this demon lord will never fade that's for sure. He is confident with his own feelings. However, if Ramuru's love for him fades in the future, he wanted Ramuru to have the chance to love another once again. What do you mean? Ramuru asked, tilting his head to the side. As far as explanation goes, if they mate, they will be bound by each other forever. He understands that and he wants that. What could possibly go wrong? If our feelings fade in the future, I want you to have the chance to love another once again. As soon as those words left Voldora's mouth, Ramuru's aura turned dark and is released in dangerous amounts. And that's when Voldora realized, he fucked up. He's a true dragon and is one of the strongest beings, but he's still scared of Ramuru. Let's get that straight. Are you saying that you would stop loving me in the future? Do you have another? Ramuru asked, with his eyes covered by his hair and his voice sounding dangerously calm. Voldora panicked. And no, I do not have another. And I know my feelings will not waver, even a thousand years pass I just Voldora was lost for words. He doesn't know either. He thought he was looking out for Ramuru's best interests. Turns out he unknowingly stepped on a landmine. Then why? Do you think so little of my feelings? Do you think my feelings will waver? After all you this time Ramuru suddenly stopped talking. The silence is choking Voldora. His heart jumped to his throat as soon as he heard Ramuru crying. The demon lord did not intend to cry. He was just overwhelmed. 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just thought you may not want to be with me forever. You have a lot of admirers, and you deserve someone better than me, who is a crackhead and an idiot. Voldora said quickly, trying to appease Ramuru. He wiped the tears running on the demon lord's face, and kissed his forehead. I chose you didn't I? Ramuru said quietly, sniffing. Voldora smiled. Of course, he knew that and he had never been happier. Voldora then cradled Ramuru and hugged him while kissing his temples. He sighed. It looks like Ramuru already decided. If he is in, then he is in as well. He never knew this would even be possible. But since it's with Ramuru, that's no surprise. All right, if that's what you want, we can do it, Voldora said. Ramuru then got out of his arms, smiling, despite the tear tracks on his face. Really? Voldora nodded in confirmation. How do you do it anyway? Ramuru asked, ready to do anything. Voldora laughed nervously. Well, we need to have a sex, Voldora said quickly. Ramuru blinked. What? Come on, don't make it hard for me. You know what I'm talking about. Voldora whined like a child and hid his face into Ramuru's neck. You talk so fast, I, to complete the ritual, master an individual. Voldora should have sexual intercourse, and once combined magicules required had been acquired, individual. Voldora will mark master to the chosen body part, and a dragon insignia will show completing the ritual. Seal intervened answering Ramuru's question. The little demon lord blushed. How the hell would they be able to have sex when he is technically genderless? Answer. With the true dragon seed, master's body will automatically be changed to the desired gender matching the true dragon master is mating to. Wait what? My body can do that? Individual Voldora will envelop you in his dragon aura beginning the ritual until the end. This would help with the modifications required. So basically we need to have sex? And you need to mark me as well? Ramuru inquired, wanting to hear it from Voldora. He felt him not on his shoulders. He's nervous. They have never done that. Sure, they make out and they cuddle, but that's it. Um, I don't know how to do this I've never Ramuru stammered. Voldora then decided to look at him in the eye and assure him. I don't know what to do either, I never imagined I would be able to mate at all. So it did not even cross my mind to learn the ritual. Voldora grumbled, a little bit embarrassed about his lack of knowledge in the matter. But at some point, it made Ramuru happy. If he does not know it, then it means, they are each other's firsts. Well, then that makes the two of us. Ramuru then decided to be brave and take the first step. He pulled the Voldora's face and kissed him hard. Compared to their normal makeout sessions, this one is full of emotions, full of anticipation. Voldora can feel it too. He returned the kiss with the same passion. They technically do not need to breathe but the pulled apart to look into each other's eyes. Are you sure about this? There is no going back after this. Voldora asked, making sure. Ramuru rolled his eyes in feigned annoyance, but the smile on his lips says otherwise. I've never been more sure Ramuru confirmed. With that, Voldora started to release his dragon aura and envelop Ramuru with it, creating a magnificent orb surrounding them. This aura's other purpose is to protect both of them from any unwanted visitors. While doing the ritual any other beings would be dead if they are at least one kilometer near the cave. But for Ramuru, this aura is like a warm hug. It feels safe. He closed his eyes to bask into the feeling, letting Voldora take the lead. Everything else did not matter to him. This is the start of forever. There is no going back and he would not have it any other way. Unbeknownst to Ramuru, Seal is working on the background, making sure that no one will disturb them throughout the process. As soon as Voldora's aura was released, Seal immediately activated a barrier to prevent the aura from coming out of the cave, to protect the citizens of the Great Jura Forest. While Voldora and Ramuru are out in their own world, Ramuru's executives are on edge. They knew their lord is safe, however, they cannot feel their lord's aura. Normally, even if they are not together in one place, that connection lets them know that their lord is just somewhere, alive. Considering what happened today, they cannot help but be worried. What if there are still enemies out there? What if something happened to their lord? Jura Tempest Federation, Ramuru City. 10 p.m. Did Ramuru Sama tell any one of you where he was going? Xian asked with a frown on her face. Then Amaru, who is equally worried, shrugged his shoulders. He just told us that he has some personal business to attend to. Sitting on his right side, Diablo is unusually silent. Since he cannot feel his lord's aura, he cannot pinpoint his location. It doesn't seem like it vanished, since their lord's blessing is still intact. 
it seems like it was just concealed. But why? I understand you are all worried, but I believe Ramuru-sama would not want you all to sulk. Come on, eat and relax, Shuna said, encouraging them to enjoy the festivities. The other monsters and demons seem to not notice their lord's prolonged absence, which is good they do not want all the citizens to be worried. With a sigh, the Tempest executives ate and just put their worries at the back of their heads. They will wait patiently for their lord's arrival. Great Jura Forest, Sealed Cave. Rimuru did not know what happened, all he knows is that he feels like he's in heaven. Everything is still a blur, but that's irrelevant to him. He wanted to stay like this forever. Ru, are you awake now? Someone is talking to him. He tried to turn his head to where the sound is coming from, but he's too tired. His body is so sore and he can feel a little stinging on his wrist and forearm. He frowned. He should have pain nullification. Why is he feeling pain? Answer. Pain nullification does not work on effects that came from mating ritual. Master has to endure until the process is complete. Seal answered. Well, that sucks. Rimuru thought. He had been used to not feeling the pain that this minor pain is making him uncomfortable. He wanted to complain, but even talking seems to be a tough job. He is so exhausted. His complaints turned into whines, and then he felt soothing kissing running from his temples to his cheeks, down to his jaw and neck. It made him relax and pliant. He sighed, content. He snuggled further to the warmth that envelops him, and allowed the darkness to take him once again. Voldora had been awake all this time. After they consummated and after he marked Ramuru's wrist, his little demon lord passed out. He was worried, but he knew how tiring it is for his small lover. Mating a true dragon is exhausting and can lead to death if the individual is not strong enough. His worries turned into sheer happiness. As soon as he saw the dragon's insignia slowly appearing on his Ramuru's wrist, once that is completed, he can remove the dragon's aura and take Ramuru home. Yes, he can now confidently call him his. He knew from that start that they are meant to be. It may sound cheesy, but everything just seemed to fall into its perfect place. The moment the slime and the dragon met in this cave, the situation is just too perfect to be a coincidence. When he felt Ramuru move, he focused his attention on him. He's frowning in his sleep and started whining. He tried to talk to him, but it looks like Ramuru is still out of it. He must be hurting all over but there's nothing he could do about that. So, he opted to just pepper kisses on all the surfaces his lips could reach to calm him down. He considered it a success when he felt the demon lord relaxing and the frown leaving his face. As his lover continued to sleep, he started thinking about where he should take Ramuru. Should he take him to his own home, or should he take him to his room on the 100th floor in the labyrinth? Suggestion. I believe Master would appreciate it if he woke up in a place covered by your scent and aura, Master Voldora. Voldora blinked. Is this Raphael? It's been a while since he was able to communicate with the skill. I am Mana's, Seal, I am Master Ramuru's ultimate skill. I evolved from King of Wisdom, Raphael, after he named me while fighting your physical body. Oh, but how come you can talk to me outside the imaginary space? Asked Fuldora. Answer. This is because of the soul bond. I am only able to communicate with you if the master is indisposed due to a dire situation or emergency, or if he had given me explicit permission to do so. The current situation falls under the first condition. Ah, that makes sense. Thank you for your suggestion. Voldora was indeed thankful for the insight. To be honest, he originally planned to take him to his room, but he does not want to impose. You are welcome, Master Voldora. 30 minutes passed, and the dragon's insignia is now clearly showing. That concludes the ritual. He immediately sees the dragon's aura. Seal, can you dress your master? Answer. Yes, it shall be done. As soon as Seal finished that sentence, Ramuru's body is now covered with a white robe. Voldora does not have any issues since he can do transformation spells and recreate his clothing. Once he deemed both of them decent, he teleported back to his room. He placed the sleeping Ramuru on his bed and kissed his forehead. He does not want this moment to end. He just wanted to be him every single day. On a normal day, he knew he cannot have him for himself. Ramuru is a demon lord a king to his subjects. He has a country to run. That's why he wants moments like this to last. Once he had him tucked in, he decided to go out and greet the others. They must have been worried. He decided not to tell them anything yet, since he does not know if Ramuru wants to keep it a secret for now. As he walked his way through the plaza, the monsters started to greet him and expressed how happy they were to him safe. When he saw Ramuru's executives, he went straight to their table. Voldora Sama. Everyone stood up and greeted him with a bow. We are happy to see you well, Shuna said, looking relieved. That's right. Ramuru Sama was so angry about what happened, but it's great it worked out in our lord's favor, Benimaru said. 
Ha 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 ha. There is nothing to fear. If it's Ramuru, nothing is impossible. I believed in him from the beginning. Kuwa ha 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 ha. Voldora said, laughing obnoxiously. This lifted everyone's mood and started laughing with him. Oh, speaking of Ramuru sama, do you by any chance know where he went, Voldora sama? Xian asked. Voldora already prepared a script for this, with the help of Seal. Kuehahahe, Rimuru is currently resting. He was not able to pass on the message because he passed out after reviving me. It took a lot of his magicules. My apologies, but I can assure you he is fine. Does he need anything? My lord, perhaps we could check on him to make sure. Diablo immediately offered. Now, that is something that you can expect to hear from Ramuru's overprotective secretaries on a normal day, but since they just mated, Voldora is not yet in the mood to let anyone see Ramuru. His face turned serious. You do not have to worry, Diablo. I made sure that he is all right and personally took care of him. There is no need for you to check on him. His eyes looked straight into Diablo's eyes, daring him to argue. He released a little of his aura to make his point across. Everyone tensed. They have never seen Voldora Sama like this. He's normally a sigoing and very easy to talk to. Despite being the Storm Dragon, he never used his name or power to intimidate anyone. Not until today. Diablo is not someone you can intimidate. He is one of the most ancient demons along with Guy. He's probably one of the strongest out there. So he cannot even remember ever feeling scared or intimidated. But right now, he knew he is currently facing someone out of his league. He was rooted on his spot, unable to formulate a response for the very first time. When Voldora noticed that he probably ruined the atmosphere, he just laughed it off and patted Diablo's shoulders, maybe a little too hard than normal. Kuehahaha, since you all did well, Rimuru asked me to tell you all not to worry and just enjoy yourselves. So, stop thinking about him and just relax. Kuehahaha, that statement broke the heavy atmosphere, everyone sighing in relief. Even if they were not the ones spoken to, they felt shivers running through their spine. Oh of course, Voldora-sama. Would you like me to prepare you a drink? Shuna offered as soon as she recovered from the shock. Thank you, Shuna, but I plan to retire early. Today was a long day. Kuahahaha, Shuna nodded. Voldora just really wanted to go back to Ramuru as soon as possible. Well, then, good night, Voldora-sama, Shuna said on behalf of everyone. It seems like they still haven't recovered from the intimidation. As soon as Voldora left, all of them slumped on their chairs, their hearts pounding through their ears. What the hell happened? Then Imeru asked. He had never felt so scared in his life. Are you okay, Diablo? Xian asked her peer. They may quarrel every day, but upon witnessing that, she wanted to empathize with him. I, I think I need more drinks. Diablo managed to stutter out. Shuna nodded and immediately asked one of the hobgoblins nearby to fetch them more beer. I knew Voldora-sama is strong. We've seen his power today. But damn, Sawe said. He can't seem to move on. And it's only a small fraction of his power. Imagine being the receiving end of his power. Then Amara added. Diablo scoffed. Tell me about it. I wonder how strong Ramuru sama is to be able to beat not one but two true dragons. Xian mused. She had always admired their lord's intellect and power, but she had never concluded how strong their lord is. Ramuru sama is on another level. I doubt anyone can beat him at this point. Then Imeru stated, It gives them a sense of security that they are under Ramuru's protection, and at the same time, it inspires them to improve their skills more, wanting to prove that they are worthy to be part of the Twelve Patrons, and worthy of Ramuru's blessing. Morning came and the streets of Ramuru City is unusually silent. Most of the people are still passed out from all the partying the night prior, but some are already starting their day. I wonder where I should deliver Ramuru Sama's breakfast, Shuna mused. Voldora Sama did not inform them where their lord is resting. She was about to go to the labyrinth and ask Voldora herself when Trainee materialized in front of her. Good morning, Shuna Chan. Trainee greeted her. Shuna smiled and greeted her back. How can I help you, Trainee San? Voldora Sama instructed me to ask you to bring two servings of breakfast to the labyrinth. I believe the other one is for Ramuru Sama. Also, that's where Ramuru Sama is. I shall bring the breakfast in the control room as soon as possible. The control room is like their conference room in the labyrinth where they monitor everything that's happening in Out of Tempest. Ramuru had spent a whole lot of time inside that room ever since the war started. So it's not a surprise that Shuna assumed that that's where Ramuru rested. Um I'm afraid Ramuru sama is not in the control room Shuna-chan. I was told to inform you to bring the breakfast on the 95th floor, and Voldora-sama will pick it up from there. 
Oh, is that so? Thank you for letting me know, Trainee-san. Shuna hoped she would be able to catch a glimpse of his lord today, but it looks like that's not going to happen. It makes her worry that she cannot see for herself that her lord is alright. Despite Voldora's assurance, it's weird that their lord is not showing himself. Did something happen and Voldora is just hiding it from them? She knew Voldora will never hurt Ramuru, but something is amiss. As soon as Ramuru woke up, he immediately realized a few things. First, he is not in his room. Second, the room reeks of Voldora's scent, which is very nice, he should get used to this, he thought. So he's probably in Voldora's room. Third, he feels thoroughly refreshed. All the pain from yesterday's ritual is gone. Lastly, he felt arms surrounding his petite body. He must have evolved once again after the ritual. Judging from how his body felt, he might have grown a few inches taller, and his body became more slender. He sighed. He's never going to get manly, huh? He tried to move, but Voldora just tightened his grip. Ramuru sighed. He gave up and just let it be. Awake already? Voldora murmured. His face dunked on his shoulders, sniffing him. Yes, Captain Obvious, Ramuru retorted. Voldora laughed and kissed his shoulders. He finally loosened his grip allowing Ramuru to move. As soon as he's free, Ramuru immediately climbed on top of Voldora and settled there. And here I thought you wanted to move out of bed. Voldora teased. Ramuru just burrowed his face onto his chest. Not yet in the mood to talk. He's never been a morning person. I just received a communication from Trainee that our breakfast is ready. I need to pick it up, Voldora said after a moment of comfortable silence. His fingers brushed Ramuru's long hair. The demon lord looked at him, resting his chin on his chest, then he pouted. Voldora groaned. This attack is too early for him. Do you have to? Why can't they just bring it here? He frowned. For some unknown reason, Ramuru does not want Voldora away from him. He knows he's not clingy. Ramuru was already kinda used to being served, that he does not understand why Voldora has to leave, when their people can just bring it to them. Answer. Due to the recent mating, Master's physical and mental capacities are still adjusting to the Selbund. It would take a while before Master will get used to the feeling of being apart from his mate Master Voldora. Voldora understood where Ramuru is coming from. He does not want to leave either, but breakfast sounds appealing. Kuahaha, I just don't want others to see you yet. You won't have time for me as soon as you go back to work. So let's just say, I'm making the most out of it. Kuahaha. Despite his obnoxious laugh, Ramuru can't help but blush, who knew that this stupid dragon can be sweet sometimes. But then, it's not like he doesn't have the same sentiments. Then go, leave. Ramuru suddenly snapped then he blinked after realizing what he said. Well, he didn't mean to sound like a jealous bitch so early in the morning. He was about to apologize when he saw Voldora's smirk and decided against it. This stupid dragon does not deserve it. Before he could formulate another response, said dragon sat up caught him and caged him in an embrace, an arm wrapping around his waist, and the other held his head in place. Hey, whatever the demon lord is trying to say was cut off by a searing kiss. His lips moved on their own and allowed Voldora's invasive tongue in. All of his sass flew out of the window as he became putty in his dragon's arms. Voldora may be stupid in many things, but he sure had been an expert when it comes to Ramuru's body overnight. He just knows the right buttons to push to shut his sassy demon lord up. Once he's done ravaging his mouth, he pulled away and cradled him, kissing his temples as if to console him. It would not take a while, Voldora said, then maneuvered them so he can place his mate back to bed. Voldora moved out of bed and teleported himself to the 95th floor before Ramuru can complain. Just as promised, Voldora returned quickly. Ramuru wanted to pick a fight with him for leaving him abruptly, but after smelling the delicious breakfast, his mood changed, so he decided to let his stupid dragon off the hook. Is that Raymond? Ramuru's eyes are shining with anticipation. Voldora laughed at the sudden change of attitude. Shuna said you might want something with soup, so she prepared Raymond. Ah Shuna is the best, Ramuru said, really appreciating her intuition. Ramuru was happily slurping his Raymond noodles when he felt Voldora going behind him. He was about to ask what he's doing when he felt him tying his hair in a low ponytail then tucked some of the hair falling on his face behind his ears. Ramuru blushed. This is something that he only sees in dramas. Where did you even learn that? Ramuru muttered instead. Voldora just laughed, saying something about sacred texts or whatever. Ramuru did not pay attention. He's still dumbfounded by the sweet act. He's not used to it, okay? Ramuru had been single his whole life before he got reincarnated. His relationship with Voldora was not like this before either. Is this what true love feels like? Ramuru cringed at his own thoughts. That's just cliche. He just stuffed his mouth with more Raymond before anything cringy comes out of his mouth. Voldora 
Sarah just laughed at him. God, why did Hall fall for this obnoxious man-child again? It's been a week and none of them had seen Ramuru at all. They are now a little on the third day. Ramuru messaged them through thought communication, assuring them he was fine. Their meetings were also conducted that way. All individual updates and reports are done through thought communication. On the seventh day, Xian was about to march into the labyrinth and demand an explanation about Ramuru's real situation when she saw a rigor running towards her. Xian Sama, Ramuru Sama instructed me to gather everyone in the conference room. He said he will be hosting the meeting today. Anyone could tell how excited Rigor was. He must also be wondering where their lord was, but just kept his mouth shut, since the higher executive is not saying something about it. Xian and Rigard immediately walked towards the conference room and went to their assigned places. Xian standing behind the demon lord's chair, Rigard on the third chair on the right. The room is already full of executives. Everyone arrived 30 minutes before the required time. They are all anticipating Ramuru-sama's comeback. They are anxiously waiting for the door to open. And when it did, they did not know how to react. Their lord looked taller and more beautiful. He looks like he finally achieved his adult form. He's wearing an oversized, long-sleeved, button-up shirt tucked in skin-tight, black pants. His hair seemed to have grown longer as well, and is tied in a high ponytail. Some of his hair fell on his face, making a frame for his small face. Shuna, as usual, was the first to recover. Welcome back, Ramuru-sama. Shuna greeted and bowed 90 degrees towards Ramuru. Everyone seemed to snap out of their daze and followed suit. They all stood up and greeted their lord. It's nice to be back. Thank you, everyone. When Ramuru was seated, everyone then followed suit. I have a few things to discuss today. Everyone nodded in anticipation. Just being able to see their lord was able to lift everyone's mood. Everyone is in high spirits. First, I wanted to apologize to each one of you. Due to my anger, I forced all of you to go through the harvest festival without proper rest. It must have been hard on you. I'm sorry, Ramuru stated, bowing his head in apology. Even if he's their lord, he still felt that he put everyone in a tough situation. When he demanded them to evolve to give him more power, he felt that it was a selfish decision on his part. Everyone in the room did not expect that. There is no need to apologize, Ramuru-sama. We vowed to help you any way we can, and we are happy to deliver, Carrera said, burning with passion. That's right. We trust that every decision you make will bring forth great results. So we have no qualms in following every order, my lord. Ultima seconded. There is no need for you to worry about us, my lord. We became stronger because of you. And we will utilize our new strength to bring you victory. Testarasa added. Ramuru surveyed the room, and he could see everyone nodding in agreement. Ramuru appreciated their sentiments. It's scary how these people are so devoted to serving him. What's so special about him anyway? He's just a slime who became a demon lord because of an unforeseen circumstance. Thank you for your kind words. I really appreciate it. What they did was unacceptable, Ramuru Sama Geld interjected, as if sensing Ramuru's inner turmoil. They had taken Voldora Sama, your sworn friend, and used him to hurt you and your people. Of course, we are also upset, and we gladly participated in the war to help you save Voldora Sama. Geld continued. The term sworn friend rubbed him the wrong way though. It doesn't sound right, because he is not just a sworn friend. He's more than that. But of course. This is not the right time to think about silly things like that. He focused his attention back on the meeting. As much as possible. If there's a way to keep everyone out of danger, I would prefer to go that route moving forward Ramuru stated. He's a pacifist. He does not want any trouble. Everyone seemed to understand and nodded in agreement. As you wish, Ramuru-sama. Ramuru smiled, maybe a little too charming for everyone around the room. That some of them couldn't help but gulp. He's really glad that he's surrounded by these amazing and reliable people. Ramuru, not knowing his executive's dilemma, continued on the next agenda. Second, I know you may be wondering where I was for the past seven days Ramuru paused, gauging their expressions. He talked to Voldora about this and told him that there should be rules when it comes to their new bond to prevent any unwanted attention. Ramuru thinks it is necessary considering how strong their attachment to each other is after mating. They still can't get enough of each other, even after seven days of being cooped up in Voldora's room. They can't continue to be like that forever. They have a country to run. That stupid dragon just shrugged and said, why not? He rejected every rule Ramuru suggested. He declared that he would show his affection towards him whenever he feels like it. Which is the kind of response you expect to hear from someone like Voldora. He argued that they rarely see each other on a normal day, 
so it's his right for him to jump into the opportunity when he sees it. Rimuru just mentally sighed upon recalling their conversation early this morning. Voldora won using the dirty tactics he learned from his sacred texts. How can you say no to someone who's fucking your brains out? Everyone looks like they really wanted to know what happened. So I decided to tell them the story Seal came up with to match what Voldora told them at the victory party. After fighting both Voldora and Valgrind, I decided to free Voldora in the sealed cave. However, considering the magicules I spent fighting both true dragons, releasing Voldora, took a lot of my remaining magicules, and I passed out. I overestimated myself at that time he gave his executives a little more time to let the story sink in. So far, it looks like everyone is buying the story. Good thing, I was able to completely revive him before losing consciousness, so he was able to help me return to the city. I stayed in his room for one week, since he's helping me replenish the magicules I lost through our soul quarter. Since Voldora has massive amounts of magicules, it's difficult to share them without harming the recipient, so we decided to transfer the magicules slowly. That's why it took a week for me to recover. I see, that would make sense. I'm glad that you are now fully recovered, my lord, Hankaru stated. Speaking of which, we also would like to personally thank Voldora Sama for helping you out. Gobda stated, getting nods of agreement from his peers. After hearing Gobda's suggestion, everyone expressed their gratitude toward Voldora and requested his presence so they could properly thank him. These people are so sweet. But deep inside, Rimuru felt like he suddenly have a lot of competition when it comes to his stupid dragon's attention. He knew that was an irrational thought. These people just wanted to thank Voldora on his behalf. It's not like he's jealous or anything. A.N., who are you trying to convince, Rimuru? But alas, the irrational thought won. He's not available at this time. He's currently helping Ramrus reconstruct the labyrinth. I would make sure to let him know once we see each other. Ramuru smiled, trying to charm his way out of this conversation. No one seemed to have the willpower to argue upon seeing that. It's game over. A.N. I pity his subordinates sometimes. Sigh. Haha. Does that mean you'll be back on your normal schedule, my lord? This time, it was Diablo who asked, who had been silent since the start of the meeting. Ramuru turned his head towards his second secretary, and beamed at him nodding in confirmation causing the helpless demon to have an internal heart attack. Someone needs to give Diablo props for maintaining his composure after that. The squishy slime does not even realize its effect on people. Geez, they would do literally everything for him. He just has to say the word. After that, they continued to discuss post-war preparations for areas that were affected by the war. Since Tempest was spared due to the sacrifice of the labyrinth, a lot of citizens volunteered to help. It was a long meeting, and by the end of it, Rimuru is itching to get back to their room. Yes, their room. What's Voldora's is his and vice versa. With his heightened sense of smell, he knew that he no longer smelled like Voldora. No one pays attention to scents in particular, since it's hard to distinguish individual scents. Most creatures rely on auras to measure strength. But for true dragons, scents matter a lot. Ordinary demons or monsters may not notice, but dragons mark their territories with scent. Now that he thinks about it, the great forest of Jura smells like Voldora, fresh floral mixed with the aroma of rain. He never paid attention to it before because it's natural for the forest to smell like that. But now that he can identify Voldora's individual scent, it made sense to him. He watched as everyone left the room one by one. He would teleport to the labyrinth as soon as the last one exited the conference room. But of course, there is always that one person that would ruin it. This time, it was Benamaru. Yes, is there anything else you want to discuss with me? Rimuru tried his best to maintain his professional demeanor, but deep inside, all he wanted to do was burrow his whole body on their shared bed and engulf himself with his scent. It feels like there's something crawling under his skin that makes him grit his teeth. Rimuru-sama, pardon me for speaking frankly. I just want you to know that I trust you, no matter what. And I hope whatever is going on, you'll be able to trust us and rely on us as well. Rimuru blinked. What do you mean? Then Amaru looked him straight in the eye and without wavering, he confidently declared, I know you hid some of the truths when you told us the reason why you were gone for seven days. It's impossible for your magicules to be depleted after acquiring great power from the battle with the true dragons. I know I should not be meddling with your personal affairs, but as one of your right-hand men, I want to make sure that you are not in any type of danger. Rimuru wants to applaud Benamaru for picking up on it, 
but it's not like he wants to broadcast his personal affairs. Thank you for your concerns, Benamaru. I understand where you are coming from, but rest assured, I'm okay. I am not in danger, Rimuru assured. The military commander just stared at him, as if trying to check for any hint of lies. Rimuru just stared back at him, not showing anything. If that's the case, then my apologies, Benamaru said, bowing his head in apology. The demon lord just brushed it off and patted him on his back. It's fine. I know you were all worried. When Benamaru left, Rimuru could not take it anymore. He needed to find Voldora. He closed his eyes and concentrated on his cellband. He tried to focus and teleported himself exactly where his mate was. The occupants of the 95th floor immediately stopped working as soon as they realized Rimuru was present. It looks like the calculation for the exact location is a bit off, since his head is a bit fuzzy already. Greetings, Rimuru-sama. They all said in unison. Normally, it would have been normal for him, but right now, it made his head hurt and his skin crawl. His vision started to get blurry. This is bad, Rimuru thought. This is worse than the exhaustion he felt on his own harvest festival. He starts to look for Voldora, but he cannot find him anywhere. Rimuru, are you okay? You look pale, Ramrus said while fluttering around Rimuru, which made him dizzier. Voldora where? He doesn't think he can formulate enough words with his current state. Damn, I'm slowly losing my focus. Master, Ramrus yelled as soon as he saw Voldora materializing in front of Rimuru. I think Rimuru is sick. He looked so pale. Voldora just nodded and picked up Rimuru bridal style, then teleported to the 100th floor. Rimuru wanted to get embarrassed, but he's so out of it to care. Besides, he's already with Voldora. He's surrounded by his scent. Everything started to get better. Tell me where it hurts, Voldora demanded. Rimuru just smiled dizzily at him. I'm okay now. As if on cue, Seal immediately changed his master's clothing to a more comfortable one. Rimuru is already feeling a little better considering that he's near Voldora, but the itch on his skin is still there, and he feels hot and tired. Can slimes even get a fever? Answer. That is unlikely. Current body conditions are the result of the mating ritual. Damn, how long does he have to suffer? He slowly sat up and looked at his clothes. Despite being made of silk, it feels like sandpaper on his skin. Seal, remove my clothes. As you wish, Master Seal is really reliable. As soon as his clothes were gone, he sighed in relief. He dived back on the bed and burrowed his face on the nearest pillow. His whole body was exposed. Oi, oi, what do you think you're doing, Rimuru? Voldora groaned. He wanted to be polite and take care of Rimuru until he recovers, but Rimuru is making it hard for him. I'm getting comfortable, Rimuru said, voice muffled against the pillow. Voldora just sighed and decided to lay down next to the demon lord. He brushed the long strands of silver blue hair with his fingers. Rimuru leaned on his touch but made no move. It looks like he's starting to get sleepy. He watched him until he was sure that his little demon was finally resting before he started contemplating. He wanted to make sure that Rimuru will be okay, because he knows that side effects are not to be taken lightly. Any normal monster would not be able to even survive the initial stages of the mating ritual. But Voldora knew from the very beginning that Rimuru is not regular so Voldora was confident that Rimuru would be able to survive it despite his initial hesitations. However, despite surviving the consummation, he still has to make sure that Rimuru will survive the after effects. Despite being considered rowdy when he was younger, he listened when it was important. Hence, he still remembers the significant details of the mating ritual when his older brother was discussing it with his sisters. If they are able to successfully finish the ritual with their chosen ones, their partner's body will force itself to adapt to the new Salban formed with the true dragon. Considering the massive magicules and spiritual energy that a true dragon possesses, the chosen partner should have a body that can withstand that amount of power, since their souls will be tied together and will share the same lifespan. If an individual's body fails to reconstruct itself to the desired level required, they will mostly die due to the overwhelming power. The true dragon's energy will kill them. Hence, when Veldanava met Milam's mother, he chose to just maintain their relationship as is, and did not proceed to mate her, since he was afraid of killing her with his own power. He understood that and even his sisters stirred away from the thought of mating their partners, saying it's irrelevant considering the amount of time they spent with their partners. They do not need to make things complicated by mating for them, it's just formality. However, for a young Voldora, he thought that mating is the greatest form of commitment in life, and he wanted to be able to share his life with his intended one in the future. Her sisters just laughed at his idealistic dream. They never treat him seriously when he is younger, he can't blame them though. 
Looking back, he certainly did not look trustworthy considering how he liked to rampage whenever he felt like it. But that was a thousand years ago. It was a difficult decision considering the risk, but Rimuru had always been the type to exceed expectations, that's why a lot of people follow him. A lot may declare themselves as the most faithful servant of the Demon Lord, but their feelings can't even compare to the amount of devotion Voldora has for Rimuru. He finally found the person that he's willing to settle with. He wanted him to stay by his side forever, and he'll be damned if he will be the reason why his Ramuru would perish. He does not want to regret this. He would prove his sisters wrong and make sure that his mate would survive this. Throughout his immoral life, he had never wanted anything or anyone this bad. For him, people come and go. History repeats itself. He's not bound by anything, and he certainly does not owe the residents of this world anything. Rimuru gave him a sense of purpose. Despite being regarded as the guardian deity of the great Jura Forest, he never took his title seriously. I mean, it may have looked like that he protected the monsters of the forest before, but in reality, he's just done a pretty bad job containing his aura. Then a slime came out of nowhere, offering him friendship and giving him hope of being released to the world again, without asking for anything in return. Rimuru made an amazing country out of his forest, and made it a sanctuary for different types of species. He made him a home. As soon as he realized how deep his feelings went for the man on his bed, he vowed to protect the country his little demon lord made with his life. He would destroy anyone who will come his way. With that resolve, he gathered Ramuru in arms and hugged him tightly. He will never let go. Ramrus can't help but get worried about his friend. He looked so sick. Will he be alright? She can't help but wonder out loud. Ramuru sama will be fine, Ramrus sama Voldora sama would make sure of that. Beretta tried comforting her master. She too was worried for her creator. They received news that their lord is back in good health so it kinda bothers her to see her master looking that sick. With many people having seen Ramuru in that state, it's only natural that the news spread immediately throughout Tempest the following day. All of his subjects are worried, and some are demanding explanations from the executives. There's a lot of people crowding the entrance of the administrative office. Rigard is trying to calm the people down, while the others are trying to figure out what's going on. The higher echelons are currently having an emergency conference with Ramrus to ask her directly what happened. I'm not sure. He just suddenly appeared on the 95th floor looking sick. When I asked if he's okay, he just asked for Master Voldora. When the master came, he just took Ramuru and teleported on the 100th floor. I tried checking up on them after a while, but the aura on the master's floor is so dense even I cannot get through it. So, I just put faith in the master that he will take care of Ramuru Ramrus explained. He was looking fine yesterday when we ended the meeting. How did he suddenly fall sick soon after? Xion exclaimed. That's right. I even spoke with him a little after the meeting, and he does not look sick at all. Then Amir added. Is there something that Ramuru sama is not telling us? Shuna can't help but say. They certainly can't force Ramuru to say anything to them but as much as he cares for their well-being, they are also the same as him. For everyone, Ramuru is their pillar of support. The mere thought of losing their lord is enough to put everyone into a frenzy. The only person who can answer us right now is Voldora Sama Diablo stated. We should wait until we are able to get a chance to speak with him. How long should we wait though? What if something bad is happening to Ramuru Sama? We should do something, Sawe complained. Diablo understood his outburst and was about to answer Sawe when Ramrus interjected. She had been observing this bunch since early morning and she knows that they are worried, but this has to stop at some point. They all have jobs they need to do. I understand your feelings, but if it's Ramuru's safety, isn't Master Voldora the strongest here in Tempest that can protect him from any physical harm? And even if it's not a physical threat, didn't you all tell me earlier how Master Voldora helped Ramuru regain his strength for the past week? That just means that he's in great hands. I do not think Master Voldora will let anything happen to Ramuru, Ramrus reasoned. I'm not saying that you should not worry, it's natural, but we cannot do anything about this. Even if you go to the 100th floor, you'll just put all of yourself in danger. Master's aura may not kill you, but it can cause serious damage. Ramrus paused and tried to think of the best way to convince them. What would Ramuru feel if you all became injured because of him, Ramrus said after a few moments of silence. They all bowed their heads, a little embarrassed from losing their composure. Well, then, I shall all leave you to it. I need to go back to the labyrinth to fix things. Bye bye, thank you for your time, Ramrusama, they all said. Ramrus giggled. They are so cute. I'll let you know as soon as I see one of them. And with that, Ramrus vanished from their sight. Now the problem is how do we calm the townsfolk? Hankaru asked. 
I have an idea, Shuna stated. Everyone put their attention to their shrine maiden princess, Tempest, Labyrinth, 100th floor. Voldora did not sleep. Well, he does not need to sleep, but it can if he chose to, and right now, he chose to spend his entire night guarding the floor and watching the demon lord in his arms. It's not like someone can barge in considering the amount of aura covering the floor. He's also observing for any changes and or discomfort. But so far, aside from snuggling further in his arms, Ramuru seems okay, he sighed. He knew that the reason why Ramuru was in such bad shape yesterday was because of the prolonged time they were away from each other. Since Ramuru's body is internally reconstructing itself, it also does not have the full capacity of distributing appropriate portions of magicules to protect himself from the onslaught of energy he's receiving from the Selbund. That's why he needed to be around him at all times. He needs to envelop him with his aura to protect Ramuru's body from being destroyed in the process. It may not totally ease the pain, but it would prevent things from going downhill. As long as he's near Voldora, everything should be fine. But of course, his demon lord is stubborn and insisted that he's fine and wanted to try his limits. He just hoped that with this experience, he would comply with his request to be by his side at all times. Voldora felt Ramuru move in his arms and saw him waking up. Good morning Voldora greeted as he kissed the top of Ramuru's head. Hmm, Ramuru looks like he's still in between sleep and the real world. Voldora just chuckled. He cupped the demon lord's face and brushed his thumbs on his cheeks trying to slowly bring him to full consciousness. Ramuru is feeling really great. He's surrounded by warmth and his favorite scent. He does not want to get up yet. Then he heard Velidora greeting him and felt him kiss his head as well. Ah, this is life. Ramuru can't help but sigh in contentment. After a while, he felt him brushing his cheeks with his thumb. He leaned to the touch and kissed the inside of Voldora's palm, as if to return the morning greeting. How are you feeling? Voldora inquired. Ramuru tried his best to assess his own body. After all the pain he felt yesterday, he wants to know how he's doing as well. But his head is still so cloudy from sleep, he cannot make his own assessment. Answer. Master's body is still undergoing internal reconstruction to accommodate the Selbund. With the current dragon's aura covering the master's body, he is in 85.76% good health. Minor pains can still be felt. But as long as the master is covered with the dragon's aura, everything should be fine. Seal answered for him. Thank you, Seal. Voldora thought. It looks like his sassy little mate would take his time waking up. So he decided to abruptly stand up and take the demon lord with him to the bathroom. This action earned him a yelp and a slap on the shoulders from Ramuru. What the hell? Ramuru exclaimed as he gained full awareness. He wrapped his legs around the man's waist and wrapped his arms around his neck to prevent himself from falling. He knew Voldora would not drop him, but he needed an excuse to be close. You jerk! Ramuru snapped half-heartedly. Voldora laughed at him. Ramuru felt him nuzzle his nose to his shoulder, silently apologizing. How are you feeling? Voldora asked Ramuru as he placed him down the toilet seat and kneeled before him trying to check his body for any physical injury, although highly unlikely. I feel better Ramuru tried to reassure the storm dragon. Voldora sighed. You know, I hope you learned your lesson after yesterday. Ramuru kept silent. He can't argue with that. Starting today, I will come with you everywhere you go Voldora said seriously, there is no room for arguments. This was probably the first time that Voldora demanded absolute compliance. From the beginning, Voldora just lets him do as he pleases. Although Ramuru knows that there is no chance he's going to win this argument, might as well try. Who will help Ramrus with the labyrinth? Ramuru tried to reason. Voldora scowled at him. Ramuru is walking on thin ice right now, and he actually started feeling a little scared. Voldora never gets angry at him. Dot. The labyrinth can fall apart for all I care. Your health is more important to me. Ramuru bit his lips. He can't help but find this Voldora hot and sexy. But of course, he can't let the labyrinth fall apart. You can't say that. We have refugees and residents in the labyrinth. Ramuru continued to argue. He knows that Voldora is just looking out for him, but they are the pillars of this country. They have to put aside their personal affairs to take care of their citizens. You don't have to worry your pretty little head about that. With the large number of magicules I released last night, the labyrinth should be able to last on its own for a while. I'm amazing like this. Kuahahahaha Voldora explained then laughed, trying to ease his worries. Ramuru sighed. I guess, I have no choice do I? Voldora smiled triumphantly. Come on let's take a shower. We have a long day. 
While they are enjoying their domesticity, everyone in town is slightly in chaos. The scene that welcomed them as they materialized in the administrative office is not something they expected. All the residents are crowding the entrance asking for an explanation. About what? What happened to Ramiru-sama? Why did he look sick yesterday? Is he injured? Please let us know what is going on so we can help Ramiru-sama. Among other things, Rigard and Gata are trying to prevent the masses from entering the building, while Shuna is trying to explain the situation. Huh. Why are they worried about me? Ramiru can't help but think. They decided to wait a little more before showing themselves, trying to understand the situation. We all understand your worries, but Ramiru-sama is in great hands. Voldora-sama is taking care of him, Shuna stated. This at least appeases some of the masses. If he's okay, then why haven't we seen him in a while? One of the citizens asked. Diablo was about to answer that random person when Ramiru decided to show himself to his subjects, Voldora just right behind him. Good morning, everyone Ramiru said, gaining everyone's attention. Ramiru-sama. They all greeted their lord. You can see that everyone's spirits had been lifted as soon as they saw their lord safe and looking refreshed. With all the attention on Ramiru, some fail to see Voldora's distaste at the number of people that are starting to crowd Ramiru. He's itching to pull Ramiru to his side and protect him from these people. But he knows they meant no harm. They were genuinely worried about his mate. He'd be a jerk if he took this opportunity from them. However, Diablo was sharp. As soon as he saw them appearing he immediately focused his attention on Voldora and noticed his serious aura. This is not normal for the Storm Dragon. Despite the massive magicules he possesses, his aura always seemed to be somewhat warm and welcoming. Diablo is already being suspicious about what's going on between his master and the Storm Dragon. Ever since their lord saved Voldora, it seems like they are trying to hide something. As his loyal servant Diablo vowed to uncover the truth, he would not let anything harm his lord, not even his sworn friend. I apologize for making you all worry, but I am really fine. I think I just overestimated myself yesterday, even though I'm still recovering. I'm all right now. Rimuru explained to the townspeople. He can see people sighing in relief and other people smiling brightly. It seems like they bought that explanation. Now that you have seen Rimuru sama in person and witnessed yourselves that he's fine, I would like to request for everyone to go back to what you were doing and continue with your day Shuna announced. The people seemed to be satisfied and just nodded, saying their goodbyes to their lord. Let's go inside Ramuru instructed his officers. They all went to the conference room and went to take their normal positions every meeting. What they were not expecting was Voldora joining the meeting and taking a seat next to Ramuru. They were expecting their lord to scold Voldora and ask him to leave. But Ramuru did not even bat an eye and let Voldora be which is a weird situation. The two secretaries behind Ramuru are also sharing a glance at each other, as if asking each other what's going on. All right, I would like to thank you all for managing the people outside earlier. It must have been a lot of hassle since you all have other jobs to do. Ramuru stated, officially starting their morning meeting. No need to thank Ramuru-sama, but most importantly, despite hearing it earlier, we just wanted to make sure that you really are okay, Diablo inquired, and I hope that we can hear an honest response with you this time. Then Amir added, Ramiru sighed, looking into the eyes of his subordinates, it looks like they won't budge. Seal Sensei, I need your help. Answer. Master can tell them half the truth by explaining that after consuming the Storm Dragon's physical body, your body is undergoing evolution from Ultimate Slime to Viscous Dragonic Demonic Star God Body, and since this is one of its kind, the side effects are still unknown, which could explain your sickness to them. You're so amazing, Seal Sensei. It's no problem. I guess, I worried you a lot. Huh. Rimuru sighed and started explaining to them his evolution which by the way is the truth. He just omitted the part of his mating with Voldora. Voldora just let him take the lead and just continued watching Rimuru like a hawk, maintaining a smooth flow of magicules traveling inside their cell bend and making sure that the dragon spirit aura enveloping Ramuru's entire body is still intact. And that's why I'm still kinda weak. I didn't think it would affect me this much since I was okay after the battle. Voldora is helping me get used to it though. Ramuru concluded his story. So you are now part of the true dragon race, Ramuru-sama? Gabda asked, dumbfounded. I guess, but not really. To be honest, Ramuru forgot all about his evolution, since he was so focused on ensuring Voldora's safety. The others seemed too shocked to move or even speak. The silence is deafening. Um guys, Ramuru pressed, trying to get reactions from his officers. I can't believe it. How is that even possible? Hankaru muttered. I've never heard of someone evolving to a true dragon race. 
it's just not something a normal monster can do. Well, we should all know by now that Ramuru sama is extraordinary. Kufufufufu Diablo snickered. Ramuru just sweat dropped. That's right, it's as expected from my lord. Ranga seconded, his tail wagging excessively. He looked so proud of his master. Congratulations on evolving to one of the true dragon species, Ramuru sama Shuna said as she clapped, the others joined her after slightly recovering. Does that mean we get to have another party to celebrate this? Rigard exclaimed, excited. Of course Tempestians love festivities, especially anything that celebrates their lord's greatness. We can schedule that as soon as everyone is settled. I want to make sure that we see through post-war preparations before doing another festivity. Ramuru responded. Rigard nodded. He's probably thinking of the best date to do the festivity. And besides, there are still enemies out there. We do not want another unnecessary attention towards Tempest just because I evolved. Ramuru added, I do not think they'll be brave enough to pick a fight with you if they know, Ramuru-sama. Xion grinned, looking boastful. The others agreed with her and nodded in unison. Well, regardless of how strong he became, it's not a reason to be complacent. That just would lead to defeat. What would we do about Rudra, Ramuru-sama? Diablo asked, curious. Even if the Empire's army had been defeated, the mastermind is still out there. Who knows what he'll be scheming next? As of the moment, all we can do is wait for them to make a move. Even with my skill, I was not able to pinpoint where they went after fleeing the battlefield. So, I would like every one of you to stay alert and improve the country's defenses, while we try to reconstruct the places that were destroyed. Rimuru ordered them. Also, I wanted to get a report from Geld and Kagulrio regarding the reconstruction of the inn. Have them report to me after this meeting. It shall be done, Rimuru sama Xian said, writing her lord's instructions in her notebook. Is there anyone else arg? Before he could finish his sentence, he suddenly felt pain coursing through his core, causing him to double over the table. Before anyone could react, Voldora was already on his side catching him before he fell to the ground. Ramuru sama Shuna was about to get near her lord, but she backed up when she felt a strong aura surrounding Ramuru and Voldora, creating a barrier. Everyone is at loss, they are panicking. Aside from their lord's normal sleep mode after casually naming monsters, they have never seen him this vulnerable. They don't know what to do. They can see him wincing in pain and panting, as if out of breath. When their lord groaned, they were all tempted to run to him and provide any help, but with the barrier, all they could do was watch their lord suffer. As for Voldora, he immediately created the barrier to prevent others from interrupting. They don't have time to teleport to their room so this will have to do. Hey, Ramuru, focus on me and match my breathing. I'll take over from here, okay? Voldora whispered through his ears. Ramuru nodded. He trusts Voldora. With his consent, Voldora took charge of their cellbind and immediately worked on managing the excessive magicules that's getting out of hand. Since it's near Ramuru's core, he has to be careful. The others could only watch as Voldora sat on the floor repositioning Ramuru on his lap, facing him. It looked like he whispered something in his ear because their lord nodded before slumping on the storm dragon's shoulders and closing his eyes, face contorting in pain. Voldora in turn, just wrapped his arms around their lord tightly before closing his own eyes as well, as if concentrating. Their position looked so intimate that others couldn't help but look away with a blush on their face. After what seems like forever, the barrier disappears and they can see that their lord is no longer in pain. He seemed to have fallen asleep. His breathing was no longer labored, and his face was void of any pain. Before they could open their mouths to ask, Voldora stood up carrying Ramuru with him, one arm supporting Ramuru's thighs, and the other wrapped securely around their lord's waist. Due to the sudden movement, Ramuru frowned in his sleep, and a whine came out of his lips. Voldora immediately turned his attention to Ramuru and pushed him, and kissed his ears. He then adjusted his grip to get him comfortable. This action, of course, did not go unnoticed by Ramuru's officers, however, their concern for their lord is more important than their personal curiosity. Once Voldora was sure that Ramuru was settled, then he turned his attention to the crowd that's waiting for an answer. He's fine now, no need to worry. Just make sure to execute all of his orders. I will let you know if there are any changes in his condition. Voldora stated, Some seem to want more information about Ramuru's condition, i.e. Benamaru and Diablo, but he just narrowed his eyes, challenging any of them to argue with him. Everyone just nodded, not wanting to be at the end of the storm dragon's ire. Satisfied, Voldora concentrated and teleported them back to their shared room. Once Voldora vanished from their sight, everyone was still rooted in their spots. 
What the hell is going on? Then Amaru asked no one specifically. No one seemed to know either. They all saw how tender the storm dragon had treated their lord. It was shocking to watch. They all knew that both have history, and it's only natural for the storm dragon to be biased with their lord, since they were sworn friends, and aside from that, the two in question can always be found bantering with each other. So, what changed? Diablo had been devoted to Remuru ever since he saw and felt his majestic presence. As an ancient demon, he considered himself to be one of the strongest existing, so he treated the world as his playground. Unlike other primordials, he doesn't really like creating a lot of followers, so only a few demos are under his color. Most demons will only serve someone they deem worthy. Considering Diablo's strength, there hasn't been anyone that he deemed worthy of his time and service until his lord arrived. He caused a great deal of damage in the netherworld when Beretta took his spot in the line of summoning. But of course, even if he wanted to pick a fight with Beretta for taking his spot, he cannot hurt her because it was his lord who personally made the golem's body. He wouldn't want to create a bad impression, even before he has the chance to prove himself worthy to be his lord's follower. So, in the end, he waited patiently for another chance to be summoned by this lord. Upon receiving his first order from his master to catch the only survivor of the Pharmas army, he vowed to make it happen and make his future master proud. It was hardly a task for him since he's going to fight a human magician. He encountered a lot of those in his long life. So, after he defeated Razzle, he went to Remuru City and looked for Ranga the Wolf as instructed. As soon as he stepped foot in the area, he felt immense power coming from the center of the city. He was so thrilled with the idea of his lord evolving to a demon lord. He watched his future lord revive all of the murdered citizens in one go. Reviving one person will already consume a lot of magicules hence, no one was able to do it successfully but his lord made it look so easy, reviving hundreds in one go. This already raised his level of respect to the demon lord and made him want to serve him more. He silently vowed to spend the rest of his life serving him. That's why it was no surprise that he came with a brilliant idea to convince the other primordials to join him in serving his lord. If he's going to recruit someone to serve his lord only the best demons are allowed. Hence he fought all the demons under the three demonesses command to see who could last against him and as a result. 200 greater demons were selected under each primordial totaling to 600,000 greater demons being added to Tempest's military power. His main reason for doing so is to lessen his miscellaneous task, so he could stay by his lord's side. So now, with all the efforts he had put through to ensure that he will be spending more time serving his lord, he has a new dilemma that comes in the form of the storm dragon. Although his master had already said his peace about the matter and assured them that he's fine, Diablo finds it hard to believe that something like evolution would do so much suffering for his lord. Evolution can cause exhaustion and can cause someone to sleep for one two days, but witnessing his master in great pain makes him more sure that something is definitely causing his master's pain, and he will make sure to uncover whatever the hell is that. Another thing he noticed is that ever since they came back from the battle with the Empire, his master and the dragon had been acting weird. Could it be that the storm dragon is still being controlled and is using his master as host for his evil plans? Reviving demons monsters do not always guarantee 100% recollection of their memories, characteristics, and personality. He never doubted his master's ability, but he had to admit that they were facing a strong enemy. If those people were able to control the storm dragon, that means they may also be able to use stronger magic that can still manipulate the storm dragon. Despite his master's intervention, he can't let the storm dragon near his master if that would be the case. With that conclusion, he called for the three demonesses, Testarasa, Ultima, and Carrera. He updated them on the current situation. So are you saying that our lord might be in danger because the storm dragon might still be in control of the enemy? Testarasa summarized his story. Diablo nodded and sipped his tea. You understand that with that thought, you are considering the guardian deity as an enemy right? Carrera stated. Diablo looked at her as if she's stupid. Anyone who poses any harm to my lord is my enemy, no matter who that is. Diablo replied. Testarasa looked like she's thinking about something. What is it? Testarasa looked at him with a deadpan expression and asked. Do you have any evidence? Diablo looked offended. My evidence is my instinct. Ever since I became Ramuru Sama's second secretary, I always have to know if my lord is in danger. Diablo proudly exclaimed. I know you won't understand since you are not in my position. Talk about being dramatic, Ultima thought. We cannot take action against Voldora Sama, just because you feel jealous of him Ultima stated, blowing imaginary dust from her fingernails. 
I am most certainly not jealous, Diablo denied. I, as Ramuru's second secretary, cannot have petty emotions such as jealousy. What is there to be jealous about? I am always by his side. Oh ho, didn't you say that Ramuru sama had been with Voldora sama the whole time? In .his .room, Carrera pointed out with a smirk. The three demonesses knew they shouldn't tease Diablo like this, since they know that angering him may lead to them being sent back to the netherworld, since he's stronger than the three of them combined. I know that Voldora sama is an important person to Ramuru sama but as his loyal servant, I also need to make sure that he's safe. So, I want you all to do surveillance. Have some of your underlings spy on them and report to me in detail what they are doing. You know that if Ramuru-sama found out about this he would flip. Remember his rage when Voldora-sama was taken? I do not want to be on the receiving end of that anger. Testarasa calmly reasoned. Ramuru-sama does not need to know. If it turns out that I am wrong then that's great. That means Ramuru-sama is safe. But if I am right Diablo paused and narrowed his eyes to the girls, making them understand his motives. The girls sighed. It's not like they can decline him. Of course, they would do it. At the very least, they are concerned too. It's just that they knew Diablo is just being dramatic. He likes to exaggerate things when it comes to their lord. And with that, a secret surveillance group had been formed. Ramuru woke up a little groggy. His body is sore and his chest kinda hurt. He was frowning when he sat up. He tried searching for Voldora, but he's nowhere to be found. Then he heard the shower running. I know it's annoying, but I still can't use pain nullification. Answer. It's no problem at all. Master's assumption is correct. Arg, when will this be over? Answer. It depends on the individual's strength. Considering Master's recent evolution, the side effects should be over within the next three days. Three more days? That's so long. Rimuru complained in his head. What are you frowning about? Voldora asked as he walked out of the shower and sat at the edge of the bed a towel loosely covering his lower half. Ramuru can't help but stare. The storm dragon smirked and crawled slowly towards Ramuru until he had him laying on his back cage within his body, like a predator to its prey. Like what you see? When Ramuru realized the position they were in they blushed like a tomato. He knew he should be used to seeing Voldora naked, since they've done it so many times already, but why is he still blushing like a little virgin? S shut up you pervert. Ramuru stuttered out. Oh ho, me, a pervert? I don't think so, Voldora teased. His face is inching closer to Ramuru's hand-covered face. Stop being a creep and get de-dressed you stupid dragon. Voldora laughed at him, amused but made no move. He just took Ramuru's hand away from his face and pinned it above his head. The demon ward tried to struggle his way out of the grip, but Voldora is just so much stronger than he is. Then, he suddenly thought of changing into slime form to wiggle his way out. Answer. Changing forms is currently unavailable at this time. What? Now that he thought about it, despite how exhausted his body is, he never changed in his slime form since their mating. Damn, how we get away now? Why are you doing this to me? Ramuru whined softly, slowly giving up. The storm dragon just smirked at him and pecked his lips, shutting him up. Because I can. The hell are you smug about? And because you are mine, well that statement did shut him up, for real. It's not like it's not true. But in his mind, it's just so cheesy. But he liked it. Why you're reading too much manga, Voldora. The obnoxious laugh coming from his dragon made him feel at ease despite his current position. Voldora decided to stop teasing him and let go of his hands. He stood up and started getting dressed. Oh shit what happened to the meeting? Ramuru suddenly remembered. He's so embarrassed. They probably think something is wrong now. Don't worry, they did as they were told and just continued their day. I also asked Gel to summarize the updates regarding the reconstruction project when you were sleeping. It's on the table, Voldora said casually as he put on his t-shirt. Ramuru looked at him, gaping. Voldora was not the type to take charge of anything. He normally just does things on his own, sometimes Ramrus is conspiring with him, but that's it. For him to do this Ramuru was touched. Ramuru crawled out of the big bed, walked to Voldora's study table, and sat on his chair. He checked the updates and smiled in satisfaction. Looks like everything is running smoothly. Based on a report, it shouldn't take more than three weeks, and everything will be restored. I wanted to check the site personally Ramuru stated, aside from personally checking it. He also wanted to express his gratitude towards the people who were working hard, despite the dire situation. I know you'd say that. We can go there, but I will come with you. I know. Ramuru smiled. He wanted to be with him anyway. As soon as the couple left the labyrinth, all the demons assigned to the surveillance immediately masked their aura and started following the two. So far, nothing is unusual. Their lord is just casually talking to the storm dragon. 
laughing with him from time to time, and it looks like they were going to the construction area to greet the workers. Despite masking their aura, Voldora knew they were being followed and observed, and of course, he stood alert despite speaking with Ramuru. Since some of Ramuru's capabilities were off due to the side effects, Voldora always has his dragon iron magic perception activated to ensure his mate's safety when they go outside. So far, they are not making a move, so he let them be. Based on their aura, they seem to be part of the black numbers that are under Diablo. He smirked. He knew that the demon was already suspecting something, so he decided to give him a show. He wanted to make sure that after this he would know his place. As soon as they arrived at the site, Geld and Kagulrio immediately ran to them. Ramuru sama Voldora sama They bowed 90 degrees and greeted their lords. I saw the reports, I wanna thank you for your hard work. Ramuru stated and smiled at the two. Geld was kinda used to his lord's charm, but seems like Kalgurio is not since he looked dumbfounded, and is blushing like hell. Are you okay, Kalgurio? Ramuru asked, concerned. That seemed to snap the former empire commander out of his dazed state. Why yes my lord, we appreciate you coming to the site and blessing us with your presence. Kagulrio immediately said, trying to cover up his embarrassment. Voldora eyed the ex-commander, trying to gauge if he should be the first person to be part of Voldora's wanted list. Ramuru feeling a murderous intent through the soul bond, snapped his attention to the storm dragon. It looks like he doesn't like Kalgurio that much. Ramuru thought and decided to save the innocent man from his overbearing dragon. It looks like you're still doing something. I'll just go around and check on the others. Let's go, Voldora. And with that he dragged the storm dragon with him, successfully preventing any casualties. You can't always think murder when someone is talking to me. Ramuru lightly scolded. Why shouldn't I? He's looking at you the wrong way. Voldora defended himself and pouted like a child. He's not looking at me differently. We're just normally talking. Ramuru replied. Then he decided to tease him, payback time. Oho is the mighty storm dragon jealous, and wiggled his eyebrows at Voldora, taunting him. Voldora stopped walking and looked at him dead in the eyes, and answered, Yes, I am. Ramuru blinked, then blushed. Well he did not expect such an honest answer. Voldora smirked at him and flicked his forehead. Why you shouldn't be, Yubaka. Ramuru whispered and started to speed walking somewhere not looking where he was going, as he tried to run away from that awkward situation. He can hear Voldora laughing just behind him. He was so focused on getting away that he did not notice someone pushing a cart coming his way. Watch out, but it's too late. He got bumped into and fell to the ground. He's not hurt though, since Seal immediately activated pain nullification. Ramuru sama I'm sorry, I did not notice you. Are you okay? The person, who was probably the one pushing the card, asked and was about to assist him to stand up when Voldora suddenly appeared in between him and the person. Do not touch him Voldora growled unintentionally, leaking a little of his aura. The man, who had never seen the storm dragon before, stammered and almost pissed his pants from the strong aura coming at him in waves. I am sorry, Voldora sama Please have mercy. He bowed down on his knees, trembling. He doesn't want to die yet. However, Voldora paid him no mind, and just focused on assisting Ramuru back to his feet. He scanned him from head to toe trying to check for any visible injury. He felt through the salbin that seal probably activated pain nullification on Ramuru, but he just can't help it. Ramuru brushed his hands up and down Voldora's right arm, as if to assure him that he's fine, then turned his attention to the stricken ex-soldier. Don't worry about it. It was me who was not looking where I was going. Ramuru tried to reassure the man, but it seems like it didn't really assure the soldier. I am really sorry. I will do everything Jay just please don't kill me. The man continued to plead. I already told you, I'm not going to kill you. So, you can stand up now, Ramuru instructed. The man slowly stood up and looked back and forth between Ramuru and Voldora. The man seemed to not believe him, since he was traumatized by Voldora. Voldora has already forgiven you. So you can rest assured that you will be fine, right, Voldora? Ramuru asked pointedly at Voldora. The said dragon just scoffed and nodded his head in confirmation. The man visibly sighed in relief and with a final apology, he ran off. Let's go, Voldora said and grabbed his arm. Hey, where are you taking me? Ramuru asked, and as soon as he finished his question, they were both teleported somewhere deep in the forest of Jura. What are we doing here? We're not done yet checking the site. Ramuru complained and stomped his foot. You know, I have lived thousands of years, and I have never had my patience tested much within just an hour Voldora stated bitterly. What are you saying? Ramuru asked, confused. He tried to think why his dragon could be this upset, then it clicked with him. 
Don't tell me you're jealous for real, Ramuru exclaimed. Voldora pinned his body on the nearby tree and looked down on him. His emotions are all over the place making his magicules leak uncontrollably. Ramuru was just glad that they are far from the city, because this would definitely kill normal humans and weaker monsters. Ramuru sighed. You know that I am yours as much as you are mine, Voldora Ramuru said. Voldora slumped himself onto Ramuru's shoulder and groaned. I know, I guess I'm just being selfish. I'm sorry. Voldora apologized. The storm dragon felt Ramuru petting the back of his head as he kissed his shoulders. Report. Individuals. Diablo, Carrera, Testarasa, and Ultima with 200 other greater demons, will be here in three seconds. Before Ramuru could process that report. Someone kicked Voldora away from him. He snapped his head where he went and saw Voldora standing up just a couple of feet away. Ramuru sama please evacuate. We'll handle the storm dragon, Diablo said urgently. The other three demonesses formed a protective stance to cover him from Voldora. He can also sense other demons gathering just around the area. Wait what? Warning, intense magicules leakage was confirmed from Master Voldora. Attempting core protection, Seal informed him. Core and Salbin protection, success. The protective layer can only last for five minutes. Thank you, Seal Sensei. Diablo, what are you guys doing? Ramuru exclaimed. The girls turned to him and glanced at each other, as if silently communicating. Ramuru-sama, please leave and get yourself to safety. We may not be a match for Voldora-sama, but we can stall time since we have him outnumbered. Testarasa stated. That's right. Carrera seconded, Ultima nodding her head in agreement. They turned their attention back at Voldora, who was just standing there, not looking at any of them. But despite that, they all knew they had to be careful. The amount of power radiating from the dragon is already suffocating. Damn, he had to get these four demons away from Voldora. What are they thinking of doing at this time? Stop at this instant. I think there is a misunderstanding, Ramuru said, trying to convince the demons to step back peacefully. He can feel Voldora's overwhelming power within their cellband, so he knew he would blow up soon. Ramuru-sama, you may have noticed it due to your close relationship with Voldora-sama, but we all believe he was still being controlled by Rudra. He's still using the storm dragon to do you harm, my lord. Diablo explained dramatically. Ramuru had to give it to Diablo's imaginative mind. How did he even come to that conclusion? And he was even able to convince the other three demonesses? Huh. You have some nerve, demon Voldora said darkly, and started walking towards them. Voldora. Then Ramuru felt it. Despite the overwhelming power, he can feel that Voldora is somewhat amused, no sense of anger. Then he heard him communicate with him through thought communication. I'll just let off some steam. What the hell? Normal monsters do not let off steam by fighting primordials. Let off some steam my ass. You have a different way of letting off steam you idiot. Koo ha 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 ha. Since they came to me, why not have fun? Report. Three minutes left. Seal Sensei, say if we ran out of time what would happen? Answer. Overwhelming power can cause damage to the master and will possibly cause sleep mode. That may last for seven days. The body will have to restart reconstructing itself again from the beginning. So, in conclusion, I will have to endure the side effects for longer? Answer. That is correct. Damn the stupid dragon. Always causing trouble. When Ramuru finished speaking with Seal, he saw Voldora engaged in combat with the three demons. Ha, huh, that's all you can do? You have a long way to go. Kuahaha, and proceeded to launch his Hadouken attacks. Ramuru face palmed. He probably got that from one of his manga. Seal Sensei. Report. Activating the ranged barrier. As expected of Seal Sensei. Ramuru then focused his attention on the battle. Voldora looked like he was about to use death heralding winds on all four of them. The demons are not backing down and look like they were about to attack Voldora simultaneously. Letting off some steam my ass. He's going to blast the whole forest. Stupid dragon. So, Ramuru decided to do something that would definitely stop him. He'll probably regret this later, but nothing else will work with his stupid mate. Report. One minute left with that. He flew himself in between the demons and Voldora and absorbed all attacks coming from each party. Ramuru-sama. Ramuru ignored them and faced Voldora. Voldora was about to complain when Ramuru cupped his face and kissed him on the lips. The world stopped for everyone as they witnessed what happened. Please control yourself. I'm at my limit. Already Ramuru whispered in Voldora's lips. Voldora seemed to have recovered from his initial shock and caught Ramuru's head and kissed him with more passion all the while controlling his excessive magicules leaking, and those affecting their solvent too. 
Diablo cannot fucking believe his eyes. The girls seem to be in the same situation as him. Diablo prided himself for his knowledge about their lord's likes and dislikes and his little quirks. He had never seen his lord interested in anyone. He treated everyone the same. Despite that, though, he cannot help but still be smitten anyway. He saw his lord breaking off the kiss and saying something to the storm dragon. Then the said dragon pulled his lord back to a more passionate kiss. How he wished he was the one holding his master. But looking at how his master wrapped his arms around the dragon's shoulders, and returned the kiss with the same passion he knew he never stood a chance. As he watched the scene, he saw Voldora looking at him in the eyes, despite being engaged with his master. Afterward, he heard through thought communication, he's mine. Rimuru felt Voldora break off the kiss and heard him whisper. What happened to no PDA? Rimuru just smacked him in the head. That stupid dragon has the audacity to point that out when in fact he was the reason for all this trouble. That's so mean, it hurts. Voldora yelled. You deserve it, Baka. Rimuru yelled back at him. The demon lord then turned his attention towards the little crowd that had probably watched their little scene. He sighed. There's no going back now. He slowly descended in front of the primordials followed by Voldora. Um he awkwardly started. The three demonesses were all looking at him wide-eyed. So you two are together? Testarossa asked, dumbfounded. Before Ramuru could reply to that, he felt Voldora back hug him and place his chin on top of his head, and proudly exclaimed, That's right. Rimuru wanted to get out of the embrace, but Voldora just tightened his grip. He just gave up, he liked his warmth anyway. These four already saw them doing that. What more could a back hug do? He just nodded his head in confirmation. Rimuru saw the three demonesses kneel down and started apologizing. We're sorry to have hurt your intended, Rimuru-sama. Diablo seemed to be having a mental breakdown because he is still rooted on his spot. Rimuru decided to ignore him first, since he knew Diablo can be a little overdramatic. No need to worry, no one's hurt anyway, so let's leave it at that. I just want to ask you a question though. Ask us anything and we shall answer, my lord, Ultima proclaimed. Why did you think that Voldora was being controlled though? Rimuru was curious. These demons are smart, and he knew they wouldn't just jump to conclusions. That question seemed to have pulled Diablo out of whatever daze he was in and kneeled before him as well. My lord, I would like to express my sincerest apologies for jumping to a conclusion. I thought Voldora Sama was being controlled, since he was not acting the usual way since you both came back from the battle. And witnessing your suffering as well had led me to think that the storm dragon might be the one causing you pain considering the circumstances. Diablo explained. Well, he's right on the last part though. Rimuru thought then he sighed. Voldora is just watching everything in amusement. Well, you are partially correct in your deductions Ramuru confirmed while scratching his cheeks. Does that mean, Voldora-sama? Nope, not at all. I can assure you, Voldora is no longer being controlled. But he's indeed the one causing me pain. The four looked up immediately, as if ready to take action towards Voldora again, but Rimmer just stopped them. Hey, why are you making me the bad man? Voldora complained from above his head. I will not give you the next volumes of all your manga. If you don't shut up right now, Rimuru threatened. Voldora just pouted but decided to shut up for the sake of his manga. He just nuzzled his nose to Rimuru's head as compensation. So, as you all both deduced, we are together. But not just together. We were mated apparently. Mating with a true dragon has some side effects. That's why I am having random bouts of pain. My body is kinda adjusting with our cell bend. But other than that, I'm okay. Voldora helps me a lot. Rimuru explained. Diablo had heard about the true dragon mating from Guy thousands of years ago. When he asked if he'll pursue it with Felzard, he just laughed it out saying, he doesn't want to die yet. He was told that if the body was not able to overcome the spiritual power brought by the Selbind, the other would die. My lord, true dragon mating is dangerous. You could die, Diablo exclaimed, totally in a panic since he does not want his lord to perish. The three demonesses looked shocked for the NTH time today. I know that, but I wanted to do it anyway Rimuru stated without batting an eyelash. Rimuru does not regret it one bit, regardless of the pain. He's feeling every now and then, he wouldn't change it for anything. With my evolution as a true dragon species, it made my body more compatible to mate this stupid dragon. And as you can see, I am okay. I'll be back to normal after three days. Rimuru assured them, there's no point in covering things up. Considering Diablo's creative mind, skipping parts would only lead to extreme conclusions. Diablo cannot rebut that. To think that his lord is aware of the conditions but chose to proceed with ritual, spoke volumes of how he deeply cared for the storm dragon. W would this change anything, Rimuru-sama? Carrera hesitantly asked, 
No, not at all. My personal affairs are separated from my job as your leader. Rimuru answered honestly. Why would anything change? Well, I am relieved to hear that you are indeed okay, Rimuru sama I would like to congratulate you on your recent mating. Testarasa, the ever graceful demoness, said with a bow. Congratulations, Rimuru sama The other two girls greeted him as well. Rimuru blushed, embarrassed. Voldora, who had been silent the entire time, had accepted the congratulatory messages on behalf of the two of them sounding so smug and happy. Well, he wouldn't want to ruin it for him. He's happy too. Diablo seemed to want to say something but remained quiet. That concerned Ramiru slightly. With Diablo's overbearing attitude, he kinda expected him to be dramatic about this. Diablo, are you okay? The demon lord asked. Diablo just stood up and walked towards them, then bowed. I would also like to congratulate you on your mating, Ramiru sama I apologize for the disturbance I caused. It's fine, but can you do me a favor? Ask and I shall deliver, Rimuru-sama. Please alter the other demon's memory for me. I do not want unnecessary rumors spreading. Rimuru requested. It shall be done, my lord. Thank you, Diablo. Rimuru smiled. And that smile was enough for the demon. Regardless of his master's relationship status, he is loyal. He would still stay by his master's side, and of course, he'll still try to attempt killing a certain dragon. When his master is not looking. Shuna had always been a reliable companion to Ramuru. She's excellent in everything she does. Aside from that, she's also wise for her age. Ramuru values her input. Hence, Ramuru thought of placing her as chief economic advisor of Tempest, along with Rigard. Since Ramuru doesn't have any idea about formality and nobility, Shuna also helped him big time. Ramuru can't imagine what he would do without Shuna assisting him through all those various meetings with royalties from other kingdoms. She's also a dear friend of Ramuru. So, anyone can understand where her worries are coming from. After being able for seven days after their victory over the empire, her lord seemed to be unwell. She can't tell what type of illness it is even with her analysis. But one thing is for sure the changes her lord is experiencing are related to a certain dragon. She knew from the very moment that the storm dragon was introduced to them, that they have a very unique relationship, something that goes just beyond any normal friendship. She's actually glad that her lord is friends with someone stronger. Not that she thinks Ramuru is weak, it's just that, she's relieved that if there comes a time that their forces may not be able to fully protect their lord, Voldora would be there to save their beloved master. The Shrine Maiden Princess can't really tell what changed, but the two of them had been acting unusually. She was so shocked at how Voldora spoke with Diablo at the victory party. Although the Storm Dragon just brushed it off with laughter after, that didn't change the fact that he subtly threatened Diablo. Shuna had never seen Voldora show any hint of hostility towards anyone in Tempest. The biggest factor to this is her lord, Ramuru Tempest. Before any of this ordeal happened, she's always used to bringing Ramuru's things in his little hut. However, this was one of another change that Shuna had been adjusting to all of her master's meals are now being delivered to the labyrinth, and even then, she had not been able to see her master even once. It's always the storm dragon who was picking up the food from the 95th floor. She tried to think that it could be that their master is still resting, and it's understandable, but it had been going on for a week already. Anyone can understand her relief when Ramiru finally decided to show himself on the seventh day of his disappearance. He looked refreshed. No signs of sickness at all. However, her moment of relief was replaced again with fear when rumors started spreading that some of the residents of the 95th floor saw Ramuru almost fainted. How could that be? He was just fine when the meeting ended. Shuna wondered. Her suspicion grew when the next morning the two of them showed up together. The storm dragon even joined their meeting. The odd thing about the whole scenario is that the dragon had his eyes fixed on her master. He's watching the demon lord like a hawk. Shuna kind of expected Ramuru to tell Voldora to go back to the labyrinth, but her master just let him be, and carried on with the meeting like usual. She decided to let it go for the meantime to concentrate on the meeting. For a moment, she felt like everything was going back to normal, but a groan from Ramuru pushed her back to reality. She immediately ran towards her lord, but Voldora was already on his side, and there's even a barrier separating them from the crowd. She looked around and saw how helpless everyone looked. She rarely witnesses Ramuru in a weakened state aside from the sleep mode, so this is a little traumatizing for her. Then, he saw Voldora cradle her master and settle him on his lap. She didn't hear anything. But whatever the dragon said to her master calmed him down, because the next thing she saw was her master slumping down on the dragon's body, 
as if giving up control towards the dragon. Their position was so intimate she cannot help but cover her face with her sleeves to hide her blushing face. It looked like she's not the only one because others looked away or bowed their heads, as if to give them privacy. She knows that both of them are close, but she never saw them this close. Something is really going on. After the barrier disappeared, Shuna did not fail to notice how his master was held gently, and how the storm dragon kissed the side of his face. Aside from that there was a dragon spirit aura placed on his master's entire body for protection. Shuna was convinced that something really happened for the storm dragon to be this overprotective dot. Based on how he phrased his instruction, he doesn't want them to check on the demon lord. If there will be changes he will be the one to let them know. Other than that, it's quite obvious that her master is off limits. Now going back to the present day, which is three days after the last incident, she's preparing breakfast for the two lords when Trainee materializes in front of her. Good morning, Shuna-chan. Trainee greeted her. Shuna smiled and greeted her back. Rimuru sama instructed me to let you know to bring the breakfast to his hut instead of the labyrinth trainee said. Shuna beamed, her master might be okay now. Really? Thank you for the information, trainee-san. Shuna exclaimed, excited. No problem, trainee just smiled and vanished. She was about to knock on the door when she heard a little commotion inside. Rimuru, you're so mean. Give me the next volume of this manga. I have to know what happened. I will give it to you if you behave yourself. Shuna is already coming. What are you saying? I am well behaved. Then get yourself dressed, you stupid old man. You can't go around naked. Oh ho, why are you jealous that people might get to see my glorious body? Shut up. Shuna blushed at the implication of their conversation. She doesn't want to have her imagination running wild and decides to knock. Rimuru sama I have brought your breakfast Shuna shouted. She heard some scrambling inside before the door opened. It was Rimuru who opened the door. He looked normal. He's wearing a white t-shirt and his normal black pants. She noticed that the t-shirt seemed to be a little big on him. When she peeked inside, she concluded that the t-shirt her master was wearing is probably the storm dragons, since the dragon in question is currently topless. Good morning Shuna, Rimuru greeted, beaming. Shuna just smiled and went inside to set up the breakfast on the table. As she was doing so, she keeps glancing at the two trying to observe them. Both of them sat side by side instead of face to face. They were so close to each other that their knees are bumping into each other. They were in a light conversation talking about a random manga that the dragon just read. When Shuna announced that breakfast is ready, both of them dug in. It was a comfortable silence. A few moments after, she saw Voldora moving a little, and she was about to ask what she can do to help, but stopped when he saw the storm dragon, pulling out a hair tie from his pocket and tying his master's hair. Shuna observed her master's reaction, and it shocked her that Rimuru just smiled and thanked the dragon, as if this is a normal thing between the two of them. Well, considering that Voldora was keeping a hair tie on his pocket, means that he's probably doing this for a while now. Shuna, this breakfast is so amazing. Rimuru gushed out, looking satisfied. I agree, thank you. Voldora seconded wild munching his food. Don't talk when your mouth is full. Rimuru scolded him. The dragon just smiled sheepishly before apologizing. I'm glad that you are looking fine, Rimuru-sama. Shuna can't help but say. She was worried, and seeing her lord looking refreshed made her happy. Don't worry, I'm okay now. My evolution was completed. So I should be fine moving forward. Shuna didn't fail to notice the concerned look that sprouted the storm dragon's face. Rimuru turned to face Voldora, as if sensing his worries, and assured him he's fine. Ah Voldora, Ramrus keeps asking for you. Maybe it's about time you help her out, she's saying about the magicules not being enough to maintain the labyrinth. The demon lord stated. Voldora was about to complain, but Rimuru just cut him off. There are residents and refugees in the labyrinth, Voldora. I'm okay now so there's no need for you to worry. Rimuru said, trying to convince the storm dragon, but the storm dragon seemed to not want to budge. The demon lord just sighed. I'll call you if anything happens, Rimuru said trying to placate Voldora. Anything? Voldora prompted. Rimuru just nodded. That seemed to appease the dragon a little and agreed. Well then, I'll be off Voldora stated, getting up. All right, I'll see you later. The demon lord casually stated. Voldora was about to teleport himself when he suddenly looked at the demon lord as if wanting to say something. Is there something wrong, Voldora-sama? Shuna asked. Her lord also looked at him waiting for an answer. Nothing. And with that, he teleported to the labyrinth. What the hell is his problem? The demon lord muttered. Rimuru-sama can I ask you something? Shuna asked, hesitant. Rimuru just nodded at her to continue. 
I know I may be out of line, but I just want to make sure that you are in good hands, Ramuru raised an eyebrow. He has a gut feeling about where this conversation is going, but he let her continue. Are you two together? Shuna asked, looking straight into Ramuru's eyes. I knew it, Ramuru thought. Well, there is no point in lying to her. Yes, we are, he confirmed. He tried to look for any reaction from her face, may it be disgust, fear, worry anything. But instead, she smiled. I see. Are you happy? Shuna wanted to know. Of all the sacrifices her lord made to ensure that all of them live a happy life within Tempest, she also wanted the same for her master. I am. I am very happy. Ramuru smiled. May I ask one last question, Ramuru-sama? After the battle, you seemed unwell, and despite saying that it was due to your evolution, I cannot help but wonder if there's more into it. Why are all my subordinates so sharp? Ramuru decided to explain it to her. Shuna is one of her most trusted companions. When I evolved as one of the true dragon species, I became qualified to be a true dragon's mate. When he was taken I felt a rage I have never felt before. I don't want that to happen again. So, I decided to be Voldora's mate, despite the possible danger Ramuru explained, pausing to give her time to process the information. Is that the reason why you have not been feeling well? Shuna asked. Ramuru nodded as an answer, and explained to her the side effects he had been dealing with for the last few days. And as I mentioned earlier, my body had fully been reconstructed so, I am fine now. Shuna nodded, beaming. I am glad that Ramuru-sama found someone to cherish forever. As one of your loyal servants, I am incredibly happy that there is someone to protect you and care for you the way no one else can. Shuna said after a while. Ramuru appreciates Shuna's sincerity. Thank you Shuna, but, is it alright if you keep it a secret for a while? I'll find the perfect timing to tell the others. Ramuru requested. Of course, you can rely on me. Appreciate it, Shuna. Ramuru thanked her, then sipped his tea. Will I be bringing two sets of breakfast from now on? Shuna asked, giggling. She decided to tease her master for a little bit. Ramuru choked on the tea he was drinking. Well, I guess so Ramuru muttered, blushing a little. Shuna may be young, but she's very familiar with this look. Then she smiled, as long as her lord is happy, she wouldn't meddle with his personal affairs. But if he's not then that's a totally different story. She may not be great at combat but she's confident in her magic skills. She may not be able to kill the storm dragon, but she will make sure to leave lasting damage, if he hurt her master. As commander of the Tempest's military forces, Benimaru always had the safety of everyone as his top priority. When he received his gift-born leader, he became more confident in his war knowledge, and he can definitely say that their chances of being defeated in a war decreased all-time low. Aside from ensuring victory from wars, Benimaru is also a trusted companion of his lord. He had been with the demon lord way before Tempest became this big and successful. As such, he can say that he has enough knowledge about his lord. But for some reason, ever since saving the storm dragon, the two lords of Tempest are acting weird. It's rubbing him the wrong way. He can still remember how the storm dragon threatened Diablo at the victory party. He had already acknowledged that in terms of strength Diablo is better than him. He's just a monster. But seeing him sweating bullets after his encounter with the storm dragon, he can't help but worry for the future. If the storm dragon likes it, he can burn them all into crisps. The storm dragon has a reputation so, it's normal for them to be scared of him. However, ever since being introduced to them as their lord's sworn friend, his view towards the dragon changed. Voldora had always been welcoming and friendly. He interacts with them casually and is not the domineering type. He even sparred with them in his free time. So imagine his fear when he suddenly saw a fraction of the storm dragon's hostility towards them. He actually pitied Diablo that time. Don't get him wrong, watching the storm dragon fight their enemies brings confidence to Benimaru as a commander, because the storm dragon is a big asset to their military power, but it's a different story if that power is directed at them. When Voldora was taken and controlled, Benimaru had to admit that he had a moment of panic, but upon seeing his lord in rage and taking command of the war to save his friend, he knew he didn't have time to panic, and instead, put his trust in his lord. He doubts that their army alone can win against the storm dragon. After witnessing his lord save them for the nth time, he realized that they can't just always rely on their lord to save their asses. Hence, in his free time, he had been strategizing and looking into their military structure and the ranks of their soldiers. He wanted to build their military power in a way that would at least be helpful, if a creature as strong as the strong dragon came at them in the future. Aside from that, despite the warning bells his brain is giving him, 
He also plans to confront the Storm Dragon and ask him personally what is going on with him and their lord. As of the moment, their lord is in a weakened state, and based on what he gathered from their various meetings, only the Storm Dragon is able to help their lord at this time. He can't help but doubt if whatever the Storm Dragon is doing is actually helping, or if he's also contributing to his lord's pain. Considering him being previously controlled, you can't blame Benimaru for thinking like this. Not everyone who's been revived can retain all of their memories and sanity. Although nothing is impossible with their lord who can resurrect 700,000 soldiers without a problem, he just felt like the storm dragon is a totally different story. So after witnessing their lord in pain after their last meeting, he finally got his resolve that he will get his answer one way or another. Benamarusama, what are you thinking? Mamiji asked as she served him his tea. Elvis is just right behind her holding his breakfast. You have been thinking hard ever since you woke up, Elvis commented. Benamaru just smiled at his wives. It's nothing. I'm just worried for Ramuru sama Benamaru admitted. The girls sighed. They knew that their husband had been thinking about Ramuru for the past few days. They were worried too, but they felt like Benamaru was overthinking things. What is it that worries you? Benamaru sama I believe you mentioned that Ramuru sama is being taken care of by Voldora sama Alvis asked, sitting on Benamaru's left side while Mamiji sat on his right. That's the problem. Aside from Voldora sama no one actually knows the real situation of Ramuru sama He's not letting anyone see Ramuru sama and they have been cooped up in Voldora sama's room for the past one week or so. Benamaru can't help but rant a little bit. He's in the comfort of his own home with just his two wives, so he can let go of some of his dignity. Well, do you have anything in mind that may help Ramuru sama better than what Voldora sama is already doing? Mamiji asked. Benamaru sighed. Of course, not. He doesn't even understand where their lord's pain is coming from. Evolution? He's not stupid. He knew it's just a cover-up story. If you do not have, I hope you can put your faith in Voldora sama to take care of our lord. Benamaru sama Alvis stated. Regardless of being Benamaru's wife, Alvis is a former commander strategist of the Beast Kingdom, she's used to thinking things rationally. I just want to talk to him, Benamaru said. His second wife has a point. Well, I'm sure Voldora sama will allow you to speak with him if he has the time. Do not rush it. If anything, he might still be needed by Ramuru sama so just be patient. Mamiji advised. Well, it's two against one. Benamaru decided to be patient still. After breakfast, he went to his office and started looking into the reports he received from Sawe and Testarasa. Everything seemed to be working smoothly with the post-war preparations. On Yisama, Benamaru lifted his head and saw his sister coming in with a snack and a tea. Oh, you're just in time, thank you. Benamaru thanked his sister. Were you able to see Ramuru sama today? He knew his sister had been wanting to see their lord for a while now. But according to her, it's always the storm dragon that's picking up the food whenever she delivers it. Yes, Anie sama Ramuru sama is back in his hut, and he said he'll be taking his breakfast as usual from there. Shuna said happily. Now, that caught Benamaru's attention. Is he perhaps with Voldora sama Benamaru probed. Her sister nodded. It seemed like Voldora sama visited Ramuru sama this morning to check on him, but he left soon after since he had some business to take care of in the labyrinth Shuna informed him. She already has a script prepared for this type of question. Ah, I see. The lack of reaction made Shuna worry. She knew her brother well, and it looks like he's planning something. Since she already knew what's between Ramuru and Voldora, she took it upon herself to prevent her brother from doing stupid things. Please don't do anything reckless, Ani sama Shuna warned. Benamaru just looked at her innocently. What do you mean? I'm not planning anything. Shuna narrowed her eyes. If you do something that will upset Ramuru sama or Voldora sama I will make sure to tell Mamiji-san and Alvis one sama to punish you. Benamaru paled. Despite his image as the great commander, her sister still scared the shit out of him, and now his wives added. I promise you, I'm not going to do anything stupid Benamaru swore. Shuna nodded and with one last warning look, she left Benamaru's office. Now that he knows where Voldora is, he decided to teleport himself to the labyrinth. He asked the receptionist what floor Voldora is currently in, and he was advised he was on the 85th floor. As soon as he materialized himself on the floor, he could already hear the voice of the person he's looking for. Seems like the storm dragon is engaged in a conversation with the queen of fairies, Ramaris. 
Oh, if it isn't then Emer don't know, how can we help you today? Asked Beretta. Voldora and Ramrus's attention turned to him. Ah, I was hoping to speak with Voldora Sama privately. Voldora raised his eyebrows. When he looked at the commander's eyes, he knew that whatever it was, it was serious. Then he nodded in acknowledgement. All right, I'll be back in a bit, Ramrus. Ramrus nodded. Okay, don't forget your promise, master. With that, Benimeru led Voldora to a secluded part in the forest far from the capital. Voldora can't help but find this scenario utterly familiar. He just smirked. He already had a feeling of what the commander wanted from him. So, what do you want to talk about? Voldora asked casually as he leaned on one of the nearby trees. Benimeru wanted to smack the smirk out the dragon's face, but he needed to be calm. I will not beat around the bush. I want to know if you are actually the Lord Voldora that we know. Voldora just shrugged at him, as if it's not a big deal. Go on. Ever since you both came back, Ramuru Sama had not been feeling well. Although he already explained that it was because of his evolution, it was weird that only you can help him out. I have been thinking hard about what could have been the reason why my master is not getting better. Either it's just taking a long time or someone is contributing to his pain to maintain his weakened state. Benimeru said. And by someone, you mean me? Voldora asked, head tilted to the side. Who else would be able to cause harm to our lord? No one here in Tempest can even touch a single strand of hair in Ramurusama's head. Benimeru gritted out. He's losing his cool since the storm dragon is treating him nonchalantly. That is some accusation you got there, Benimeru. I hope you can back that up. Voldora said calmly, as he walked towards the commander. Benimeru had the urge to take a step back but his pride prevented him from doing so. When Voldora came face to face with Benimeru, they stared at each other for a while, before Benimeru decided to speak. As commander, I have to make sure that you are in your right mind after revival, and you are not hurting Ramurusama. Fight me. If you did not run amok after our battle, I will consider you safe to be with Ramurusama. If not, I will do my best to dispose of you even if I die. Benimeru explained. Voldora stared at him. When he first met Benimeru, Voldora knew how deeply he cared for this country and how much he respects his mate. He knows that he is doing this for everyone. He understood where he was coming from and appreciated his sincerity. So, he decided to indulge him. He'll just dodge his attack until the other gets tired. Well, then be my guest. With that signal, Benimeru started to attack Voldora. Ramuru was going through some documents when he suddenly felt uneasy. Answer. This is a warning from another skill coming from the Salband. It's called presentiment. It gives you a warning if your mate, Master Voldora, is in danger. Voldora in danger? He's supposed to be in the labyrinth. Ramuru can't help the fear running through the course of his veins. Without thinking twice, he teleported himself to the 85th floor. Ramuru? What are you doing here? Ramuru asked as he fluttered his way to him, then sat on his shoulder. But Ramuru is not listening to her. His eyes are quickly scanning the floor to look for Voldora. Are you looking for Master? He went out with Benimeru. Benimeru said he needs to speak with Master about something Ramuru said. I see, do you know where they went? Ramuru just shook her head as a no and flew her way towards Beretta, and sat on the golem's head. All right then, I'll just look for them. Thank you Ramrus. As soon as he's out of the labyrinth, he uses his salbin to try to reach where Voldora is. Then he felt him somewhere deep into the forest. What he saw upon teleporting there made his heart leap in his throat. He doesn't even realize it, but he's having a panic attack. The images of Voldora being taken and attacked are flashing in his mind. The urge to protect Voldora right now is so strong that Ramuru failed to realize the amount of aura he's releasing. His panic is making him unstable. Report. Massive aura leaking, attempting to conceal. 100% aura concealment successful. Activating multi-layer barrier, successful. Ramuru is not really listening to any of that. He's so unfocused that he became one trap minded. His goal is to save Voldora. Before he could even go to the battlefield, he saw two figures appearing on the side of the enemy. No one is allowed to hurt his mate. Not on his watch. A.N. It's not like they are a match for your mate Ramuru. Calm down. Ha ha ha. Report. Individuals fighting Master Voldora are. I don't need to hear it, Seal Sensei. I'm going to crush those people. But. I need to save Voldora. I'll leave the rest or may protection to you just like how you did with Felgrind. With that final command, he launched himself to the battlefield. Little did Ramuru know, those enemies are his men. Benimeru, Xian, and Sawe. Sawe was already informed beforehand that Benimeru was planning to talk to the Storm Dragon. He supported the idea since he was also concerned about the underlying threat the Storm Dragon may pose towards Tempest and their lord. However, one of his replications reported that the talk had already become a battle. 
so he came to check what the hell happened. He just so happened to be with Xi'an at that time when he received the message, so has no choice but to let her join and update her of what's the situation. Cao Wei knew how deeply Xi'an cared for their lord, and as Ramuru's personal bodyguard secretary, she at least had the right to know if there is any potential harm towards Ramuru. When they both arrived, they saw Benimaru attacking the Storm Dragon. It doesn't look like Voldora is fighting back, and is mainly focused on dodging Benimaru's attack. Oh ho, it looks like reinforcements came to your aid, Benimaru Voldora stated while dodging Benimaru's sword attack. Benimaru landed on one of the tree branches below him, and true to his word, Sawe and Xian were there. Benimaru, we're here to lend a hand, Xian shouted with a grim-looking face. In her mind, she already marked the storm dragon as her enemy for being a potential threat to her master. Oi, oi, I told you that we're just trying to check the situation. Sawe tried to calm her. This is not the plan. Well, you can all come at me, I can take the three of you at once Voldora said, smirking. That sparked Xian's and Benimaru's ire. Sawe feels like he has no choice but to support his comrades or they all die. So with a newfound resolve, he joined the fight. Voldora already felt Ramuru's presence earlier, but he's not making any move, it looks like he's just trying to watch Voldora assumed. Well, he knows for sure that Ramuru will scold him if he hurts any of his men. So he decided to stick to his original plan, and continue dodging their attacks, until they all get tired. When he focused his attention back on the three of them they were already launching at him. Since he spaced out he didn't have the time to dodge. He can either take all the attacks or counter it with an attack of his own. He's quite hesitant to counter it, since it may do them some damage. Before he could decide what to do, a figure appeared in front of him absorbing all of the attacks. His eyes turned wide when he realized it was Ramuru, Beelzebuth. The other three looked as shocked as him. When they all landed on the ground, Ramuru charged towards the three and started fighting them. He's not really doing anything that can actually kill them, but the difference in power is obvious. All they could do is dodge or defend themselves. They can't even land an attack on the demon lord. With one blow, Ramuru sent all three of them flying to the other side of the open field. They know that their lord is strong, they saw him fight countless times, but damn, they realize that they have a long way to go. As they were standing to recover, Ramuru faced them. Ramuru sama, the three exclaimed. Hey, Ramuru Voldora was about to explain what's going on, but stopped himself when heard Ramuru start speaking. I'm hoping you're all ready to face the consequences of your actions, Ramuru said coldly, while walking towards his enemy's dot eyes glowing red. His sword, which is covered in black flames, is on his right hand. The other three broke in a cold sweat upon seeing their master walking towards them. Is he being controlled by the storm dragon? That is what they all thought. There is no way their master would just mindlessly attack them without reason. After hearing Ramuru say that Voldora felt the killing intent towards their cellband. What the hell is going on? Report. Master entered himself into a pseudo-auto battle mode, due to the panic of losing Master Voldora again to the enemies. Oh shit, Voldora thought. Is there any way to remove the auto battle mode? The reason that Master entered this state is because of his strong urge to protect and save Master Voldora. If the Master realizes that you are safe, there is a 34.76% chance that the auto battle mode may disengage itself. That's a low probability. Voldora mused. Ramuru sama this is not what it looks like Xian started to explain trying her best to possibly calm their lord. Silence. Xian shut her mouth. She had never felt this scared towards Ramuru in her entire life. Her lord doesn't look forgiving right now. Sawe looked like he was panicking. He didn't want to engage in a battle with Ramuru. Benimaru's born leader skill cannot even assess their chances of winning against their lord. They were fucked. You will all be punished for trying to hurt my mate Ramuru growled. What? Hurting who? Benimaru is confused. All of them are. They closed their eyes and braced for themselves when they saw Ramuru swinging the sword towards them. But when they didn't feel any pain, they opened their eyes to see the storm dragon caging their master's body, an arm surrounding his waist, and the other gripping their lord's right wrist, where he was holding the sword. This position ultimately stopping the demon lord from moving. Ramuru, stop this. They were not trying to hurt me. Voldora said calmly while slightly twisting the demon lord's wrists to have him let go of the sword. Once the sword was on the ground, he kicked it far from them. I'll take it from here. Go home, Voldora instructed through thought communication, 
while he's trying to stop Ramuru from struggling. Despite being attacked earlier, the other three don't want to leave their lord in such a vulnerable state. They had been useless for the past week, so they wanted to be here with their lord, even just for moral support. No, we will stay until he calms down, Voldora Sama Benimeru firmly stated. The other two not in agreement. Though the initial purpose of this fight was to check Voldora's sanity, it's obvious that the Storm Dragon is not being controlled and has his sanity in check. What they didn't account for is their lord's reaction to the situation. Let go of me, let go, Ramuru shouted as he struggled to get away. They are your people, Ramuru. We are just sparring. No one is hurt. I am not hurt. No, they are trying to attack you. I have to kill the enemies. I can't let them take you, Voldora. I can't go through that again. You promised, Ramuru screamed. If he doesn't have pain nullification he would sure have a sore throat. The other three can only watch this unfold in front of their eyes. They didn't know that Storm Dragon's capture had left a big scar in their lord's heart. Voldora knew that talking would get him nowhere. So he did what his instinct told him. He grabbed Ramuru's wrist where the dragon's insignia lies, and bit it hard. As soon as he did that, Ramuru's eye turned back to its natural gold color and went pliant in his arms, he looked sleepy and tired. When the other three saw Ramuru already calmed in the dragon's embrace, they decided to check on him. Is Ramuru-sama okay? Xion asked, a little teary. Her heart broke for her lord. He's been acting strongly in front of them, but in reality, there's a lot of scars and fears in his heart. He's fine now, but he's a little drowsy, and sleepy Voldora stated as he repositioned Ramuru in his arms. Xion was about to reach out and try to hold his hands to comfort him when he saw his master, narrowing his eyes at her. Ramuru probably assumed that he's trying to reach for Voldora. Don't dot touch dot him. Ramuru grates out. Seems like he's not 100% back. Xion immediately pulled her hand back. She looked at Voldora trying to ask for help. Voldora just shook his head at her. Just give him a moment Voldora said as he pushed a few strands of hair away from Ramuru's face. Ramuru just leaned into his touch and tried to snuggle his way deeper towards the storm dragon's body. What happened to him? Then Amaru asked, although he already had a feeling what it may be, he still wanted some clarifications. He entered an auto battle mode because he thought you guys were actually trying to kill me. Not that you have a chance of doing that. Kuwa ha 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 Voldora laughed. The three face palmed. This guy cannot really read the atmosphere. I've never seen Lord Ramuru lose his cool like this. Not even when Xian and the others were killed. Sawe commented. He's just getting used to our Selbund. He probably felt overwhelmed when he received signals that I am in possible danger Voldora explained casually, as he continued running his fingers through the demon lord's hair. Selbund. Then Amaru asked, confused. Then Voldora decided to let them know everything about their matin and how their Selbund works. So he's you or Xion can't grasp the concept that her lord is already taken. Just like Diablo, she knows her master was not interested in anyone considering that he's genderless. But in reality, the reason for that is because he already has someone. The other two men were still rooted to their spots. They also did not know that their master was in that kind of relationship with the Storm Dragon. They had always announced that they were sworn friends, so they didn't think that there are more to that. I don't know if I should apologize for possibly breaking your heart, Xian, but he has always been mine, Voldora said, as he looked at Xian in the eye. Then Amaru gulped at that. He remembers all the days where men and women were gushing over their lord. He hoped that Voldora would not get back to those people now. I, I knew from the start that I am not worthy of Ramuru sama T. That's why I try my best to serve him any way I can. L. Looking at it, I don't even stand a chance. Xian said while tears are running down her face. She loved her lord and treated him as her god. But she knew from the bottom of her heart that there are things in this world that were never meant to be touched. T. That's why, I want you to promise me, Voldora sama you will cherish Lord Ramuru. You may not know it but to all of us, he's the most precious existence. Xian hiccuped. Voldora wants to say something, possibly to try to comfort her, but he stops himself when he feels Ramuru move out of his grasp, and goes to hug the crying Oni. It seems like Ramuru is back. I appreciate your feelings, Xian. All I can do is hope that you will find someone worthy of your immense affection and love. Ramuru whispered as he hugged his first secretary. With this, Xian just cried harder and embraced her lord. Then Amaru and Sawe just watched. They were both aware of Xian's feelings, and it kinda hurt seeing crying like this, but they knew this is bound to happen one way or another. At the very least, with this rejection, Xian can finally look forward and see all the people that actually liked her, and maybe then, 
someone will be able to replace Ramuru in her heart. When Xian calmed down, Ramuru then decided to face the other people with them. I'm sorry for attacking you guys. Ramuru apologized but doesn't look like he's sorry at all. No need to apologize, Ramuru-sama. It was us who challenged Voldora-sama into a sparring session. While Ramuru was comforting Xian, Voldora told them via thought communication to hide the real reason for the battle earlier. Considering the sensitivity of their solvent, who knows what would trigger Ramuru into a frenzy. We did not account how you feel if any harm befalls Voldora-sama considering your previous experience, Sawe added. I hope this will not happen again. Though Ramuru said it gently his eyes are glinting, warning them to pull another stunt like this. Try to hurt Voldora, and you'll have to answer to me is the hidden message. He doesn't understand where this sadistic mincid is coming from, but deep inside his soul, he's satisfied that he was able to at least teach them a lesson. I do not think we will try sparring with Voldora Sama again, Ramuru Sama. You totally beat the shit out of us. Then Amaru stated. Indeed. This just proves that we have a long way to go. Xian said, a little energetic now. I think I need to get training with Hakuru Sensei from now on, Sawe added. The battle had already been decided the moment Ramuru attacked them. They were no match at all. Kuahaha, you have a lifetime to improve your skills. Ramuru is just an extraordinary person, so it's kind of expected. I can train you along with Zijin if you like. Kuahaha Voldora offered them, trying to lighten the mood. They all looked at Ramuru as if asking for his permission to answer Voldora's offer. As warriors, they all want to learn from the best, and despite Voldora's attitude, he's one of the best fighters that they can learn from, so of course. They do not want to pass up the opportunity. But a certain demon lord made them hesitate. If it's training, it's fine. That is what Ramuru decided to say. They all beamed. The demon lord knew that at some point these guys look up to Voldora. He's not that mean to take this opportunity from them. It's not like these guys can hurt me, Voldora said after a while smirking. The other three made a silent vow to make the dragon eat his words in the future. They then started to ask Voldora's schedule, asking when they could start and all that. As they proceeded with their conversation, Ramuru decided to get comfortable and sat on the storm dragon's lap and lean on his chest. Voldora then decided to tease the young Oni, and hugged Ramuru as he kissed his temples, all the while looking smug towards her. Xian wanted to punch that smug look on the dragon's face, but one look from her lord who is now comfortably sitting on the dragon's lap, she decided against it. She wanted to live. The other two men just sighed. It's been a long day. As a mediator, of course, Guy is already aware of Ramuru's victory over the Empire. Ramuru has been one of his best pawns in this game he's playing. Defeating the Empire is one thing, but defeating two true dragons is another thing. He can't help but feel the excitement. He decided to pay a visit to Tempest to get the update from the Demon Lord himself. Well, he also liked to taste the pastries they have there. Misery and Ryan is still practicing their baking skills. So it may take a while before they can imitate the ones produced in Ramuru's country. Ara are you going to that land of monsters again? Velzard asked as she got down from a portal. Yes, things are getting interesting, Guy said, grinning. I want to go, too, Velzard declared. Guy raised an eyebrow. She visited once already, but she seemed not too interested to go back. So this kind of shocked Guy. Why, are you going to try to size up the demon lord who defeated your brother and sister? They were defeated because they are weak. There's no other explanation for that. I just wanted to see how strong he became from the last time I saw him. Velzard is sporting a sweet smile. But if you look closely, you can feel danger from her aura. I see. Well, if that's the case, let's go. Velzard beamed and grasped Guy's left arm as they teleported to Tempest. Ramuru is having a meeting with Ramaris Voldora and Zijin in his office. Zijin is present too as a representative of the Ten Lords or the Labyrinth. Most of the damages in the Labyrinth are already fixed. With the help of Ramaris's amazing mazecraft skill and Voldora's magicules, they are just trying to fix some minor issues. Then, Ramuru felt Guy's incoming presence. Diablo immediately went in front of my table to protect him. The other three might have also felt it, since they all looked at the door waiting for someone to appear, though they don't look that perturbed. After a few seconds, a big door with intricate design appeared. When it opened, it revealed two figures. The first one, Ramuru expected, but the second he did not. He immediately snapped his attention to Voldora who also looked at him, signaling Ramuru to do something. Ramuru just tried to calm the panic dragon through their solvent. Eh, why are you here guy? Ramuru exclaimed as she flew her way to the first demon lord. 
excited to see her longtime friend. And with Felzard, too. Ara, it's been a while, Ramrus Sama the Ice Empress curtsied. Ramrus nodded at her and went back to her seat at my table, dangling her feet. Nice to see you looking great, Velzard. Didn't I tell you to make an appointment first before coming to see Ramuru Sama? Diablo scowled. Ramuru Sama is currently busy and is having an important meeting. If you have business with him, I advise you to wait until he's done, Xion added, while standing behind my back also scowling. Ramuru thought that Diablo is the only person in his officers that could banter with Guy without dying. Looks like Xion is learning from Diablo, which is bad. Oh ho. Then that means I arrived at a perfect time. I would like to have a meeting with Ramuru as well, Guy said flippantly, not really offended, and made himself at home as he sat on one of the couches, Velzard sitting in front of him. Diablo, Xion, it's fine Ramuru said and ordered Diablo to stand down and return to his post. Thankfully, the demon always follows his orders without complaints. He doesn't want the two of them to start arguing in front of him. Shuna then came in followed by Haruna pushing a cart full of snacks and tea, and started serving the guests. It looks like we have to continue this some other time. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow, Ramuru stated, dismissing the three. Voldora looked relieved, and Ramrus just smiled at me and moved over to Voldora's shoulders ready to leave. Zijin, for the most part, just nodded and bowed to me. Leaving already, Voldora? Don't you want to catch up? Velzard asked sweetly, too sweet for Ramuru's liking. Ah, oh, Anua, I it's been a while. But I actually have work to do the Storm Dragon tried to explain. But Ramuru cut in before Velzard can think of any retort. What is it this time, guy? For sure you are updated with whatever is going on, Ramuru asked. While it may look like that he's prioritizing guy. He is mainly doing this for Voldora's sake. He can feel his anxiety through their bond, and he doesn't want to deal with him whining later in their bedroom. No need to be in a hurry, Ramuru Guy smirked as he sipped his tea. Ramuru sometimes wanted to punch Guy in the face. He's always barging in without notice. Ramuru sighed, exasperated, and ran his hand through his hair. He didn't notice how Velzard's eyes widened in shock. Report. A large-scale dragon spirit aura detected from the individual. Velzard, absolute defense activated. What is it now? I do not have time to deal with another rampaging dragon. Before anyone could do anything, Velzard was already in front of Voldora fuming. What did you do? Velzard screamed. Voldora looked so confused and that irked Velzard once more. Stupid younger brother. Always being reckless. Everyone can feel the temperature drop in the room. Ramuru signaled Zijin, Xian, Diablo, and Shuna to evacuate and lead the servers out of the room. The two secretaries were about to complain when they saw Ramuru's glare. That left Ramuru, Guy, Voldora, Velzard, and Ramrus in the room. Velzard knew what that mark meant. She had always wanted one for Guy, but she can't give it to him. But his stupid brother was able to do it like it's nothing. Like it is just normal dot, and that slime. He's acting as if the mark is a natural part of his body. How can they do things like this? Don't they have any fears? Hey, Velzard, what are you doing? I thought you don't want to fight? Guy asked calmly asked from his seat, as he took another sip from his tea. He can't really control Velzard. They were long-time partners, but he never tried to make her do anything she doesn't want. Although this time, he's a little curious about what caused her sudden anger. Why are just sitting there? Do something. Ramuru wanted to yell at him. He wanted to do something since he doesn't want the administrative office to be blown away if things get out of hand. But he felt like this is something between the two. This stupid dragon did something dangerous, and he's acting innocent. I guess my punishments when he was younger were not enough to set him straight since he's still doing stupid things. I will fix it now. Velzard gritted out, anger coursing through her veins. Now, that caught Ramuru's attention, eyes narrowing at Velzard's figure. He doesn't like the implication of that statement. Whatever issues they have in the past is none of his business. But if it concerns any harm directed to Voldora, it is his business. I didn't do anything? What am I being punished for? Voldora yelled trying to get away from his older sister, but Velzard's grip on his arm made his attempt to escape fail. Velzard raised her ice-covered hand to prepare for an attack. Guy, do something. Ramuru heard Ramrus say when they saw her aiming for Voldora. Ramuru did not wait for Guy to do something. He launched himself in between the two catching Velzard's punch with his hands, all the while neutralizing the attack. Velzard want to remove her hands, but Ramuru's grip on it made it difficult. Please, stop this right now, Ramuru said dangerously calm as he released some of his aura to counter Velzard's. Ramuru's hands gripped Velzard's knuckles a little tighter as a warning. Voldora took this opportunity to make himself look smaller and hide behind his smaller lover, pouting like a man-child he is. I didn't do anything why is she angry? Voldora keeps muttering behind Ramuru. 
The demon ward just ignored him and focused his attention on Velzard. If you are going to cause a scene, please leave. Go back when you got yourself together, Remuru demanded. Guy then stood up and faced Remuru. Sorry about this, Remuru. This caused Velzer to look at Guy. Why are you apologizing? This stupid brother of mine did something stupid and needs to be punished for it. Velzer yelled. Remuru stood his ground in front of Voldora, looking at Guy, signaling him to do something before he do something. What is it that Voldora did that made you this angry, Velzard? Guy asked calmly. Guy had learned from past experiences that you always have to be patient if you are dealing with an angry Velzard. They made it, Guy. Look at his wrist, Velzard screamed. Guy and Ramrus's eyes widened and looked at the two. What? Ramrus flew towards Remuru and lowered herself in front of Remuru's arm to check, and lo and behold the mark is there. Ramrus's gasped dramatically and flew up to be face to face with Remuru. Essence, when did this happen? Are you okay, Remuru? Ramrus asked, totally concerned. Why would I not be okay? Remuru asked, confused. Ramrus continued to flutter around his body as if to check if he's really okay. He kind of feels dizzy with all of her moving, but lets her do what she wants. He knows that she's just concerned. Guy keeps looking back and forth between the two, assessing the situation. Remuru thinks he's as shocked as Ramrus, but he just wanted to keep his image. He doesn't understand why his personal relationship with Voldora is anyone's business. So, that's the reason why you attack Voldora? Because he made me. I do not think that our relationship is any of your concern, Velzard. Remuru stated after a while, crossing his arms on his chest. None of my concern? Mating is not something you can do just because you felt like it. It's dangerous, Velzard stated, still angry. Dangerous? What do you mean? Remuru decided to play dumb. Voldora and Seal had already given him a lecture about the cons of mating before, on, and after the whole mating process. He understands what he signed up for. If not done properly, the other person can die. The true dragon will be left in despair and rage due to the broken process, and will result to utter disaster. Him, rampaging at will is bad enough. What more if he lost his sanity because of this? Even us older than that brat behind you did not even attempt it because of the danger it poses, Velzard explained, irritated at the question. It makes her feel like that her concerns are not something to worry about at all. As a true dragon, you have the skill to check on someone's spiritual magical condition, right? Remuru inquired. Velzer just nodded, not really understanding where this is going. Do I look like I'm dying? Remuru asked, looking at Velzard straight to the eye. Velzard then realized, Remuru indeed looked fine. If it's Voldora's sanity you are worried about, I can assure you that I'm keeping him in check, Remuru continued. If he ever tried to rampage out of nowhere, his punishment will be handled by me not by you. Not by Guy, but by me, Remuru added firmly. Velzard was rendered speechless. Then they heard Guy laughing. What is this guy laughing about now? You never fail to surprise me, Remuru. Guy commented after he stopped laughing. He walked behind Velzard and placed his hands on her shoulder, as if to give her a silent demand to calm down. I want to know how and when this happened. I don't need to know any personal details. But as a mediator, I wanted to make sure that this situation will not cause any future damage to the rest of the world. Remuru nodded. When the tension seemed to have lowered down, they decided to take a seat and talk things over more calmly. Guy and Velzard sat side by side on the right couch, and Remuru and Voldora sat opposite them. Ramrus decided to seat on Guy's shoulder. Remuru then started retelling the story. Velzard and Guy just sat quietly listening. And that leads us to this present situation. Remuru finished telling his story. Looking at the three people in front of him, gauging their reaction. Ramrus is smiling, Guy's expressionless, and Velzard's expression had a mix of guilt and regret Remuru can't really tell. So, it's been like two weeks since your mating? Guy confirmed. Remuru nodded. Guy then looked at Voldora, who was silent the whole time. Voldora raised an eyebrow. If you are worried about my sanity, I can assure you that nothing can break my intellectual brilliance. Kuahahaha Remuru sighed, but he smiled. At least he was able to lighten up the mood. I told you already, I'm going to keep him in check. As his mate, it's now my job to keep him from danger, whether from outside threats or from himself. So, please keep your hands to yourselves, and let me handle him Remuru casually stated as he took a sip from his drink. Guy understood the hidden message Remuru is trying to convey. You touch him, you become my enemy. Remuru did not notice the smug look on Voldora's face after he said that. He deliberately looked at her sister and stick his tongue at her like a brat he is. Velzard wanted to teach his brother a lesson, but kept her anger in check. Remuru's earlier's warning still fresh on her mind. 
The demon ward is trying to make them understand that there is nothing to worry about. Ever since having a job in the labyrinth, Voldora spends most of his time doing research with Ramorous. Ramuru doubts that he even thinks of going on a rampage for fun like in the past. Why am I going to rampage anyway? You're here with me now, so I'm happy. Voldora decided to say after a while, it's just a whisper, but everyone in the room heard it anyway. As expected of master, I know you are a true gentleman from the start. Ramorous cheered. Voldora just laughed, sucking up all the praises. Really, Ramorous, don't encourage him. What are you saying? Stupid Ramuru muttered, trying hard not to blush. He needs to maintain his image. It may be hard to believe for others, but Voldora is not that mindless. He's just a lonely dragon trying to do things that will keep him occupied, compared to before. He has things to do now things that interest him more than causing damage to random cities across the world, i.e. Ramuru Tempest. After the long comfortable silence, Velzer decided to speak. Older brother Velda had explained to me that mating is dangerous. Are you sure you are not feeling anything weird after your mating? Velzer then asked, still looking in denial. No, as I mentioned, I experienced some side effects, like random bouts of pain in my core and lethargy. But that is it. The side effects issue can easily be solved, as long as I'm near him. So, it's nothing extreme. Ramuru answered. Velzard looked at Voldora, eyeing him. W hat? Voldora tried to ask. Well, despite being the storm dragon, he's still afraid of his older sister. She just scoffed and folded her arms on her chest. I just find it unfair that my stupid younger brother was able to do things that I have wanted to do for a long time like it's nothing. Velzard finally admitted. Guy stared at her, a little shocked. You'll never know unless you try, right? Voldora said sheepishly with a shrug. Easier said than done Velzard countered. I've done it though Voldora said. While he did not say it to tease her sister, Velzard can't help but glare at him. She doesn't have any rebuttal to that because he certainly did. The thing she had been wanting for her and for Guy to have is done by her brother first of all people. She knew that she is jealous of what they had. You can't blame her. She never even thought that it is possible in the first place. All her life she believed that. If her brother can't then automatically, she can't do it herself. But seeing the two in front of her living their lives as a mated couple, she can't help but want it more than ever. But would Guy want that though? Ramuru, I have a question though. What is it, Ramrus? Would you be announcing your relationship to the council? Ramrus inquired. Why do I need to announce it though? Well, you both are like a power couple that can destroy lands if you wish to. So your relationship itself is a threat to other domains. You both share some of your powers already, right? Ramrus explained. Ramuru sighed, she has a point. Regardless, this is his personal affair, in terms of destroying lands. They have a non-aggression agreement with other countries for a reason. I don't really want to announce it to the world, you know Ramuru tried to say. But looks like Guy has other plans. You need to at least to the council. Despite the danger you both pose, I know you're not the type to destroy the world just because you feel like it. However, that doesn't mean that the other demon lords think the same. Non-aggression agreements are nothing when faced with a force beyond imagination. Guy said as if reading Ramuru's mind. So, are you saying that we need to hold a Walpurgis just to discuss my love life? Ramuru asked with a deadpanned expression. Now, don't say it like that. This could also be a chance for us to discuss what to do with Rudra. So think of it as a two-part agenda Guy said, voice making no room for arguments. What happened to keeping it a secret? It looks like everyone is bound to know anyway. I never knew I would feel like this ever in my whole life. Well, granted that I have never been into any relationship prior to Voldora. That is not the point. I started my day normally, woke up with Voldora by my side, ate breakfast with him and went on our separate ways, and started working. I originally went to the office first to have my morning meeting with my executives. But after that, I planned to go to the labyrinth to check the progress of the renovation, since someone decided to cut our meeting short last time, and of course check on the remaining people who are still recovering. When I step foot on the 100th floor and enter the room adjacent to Voldora's personal room, the one that serves as our research and development room, I already have a feeling that something is about to go wrong. I kind of expected Ramrus and Voldora to be the only occupants of the R&D room, since Vesta and Cajun had their own research room. But instead, we have the ten wards of the Labyrinth and Cherries joining the meeting as well. It's not really planned, I just want to do some rounds and see how they are all doing before I go to the 95th floor, where we kept all the refugees and injured. Hello, guys. I greeted them. They all turned their attention to me and gave me different sets of reactions. Voldora seemed to be excited to see me. Ramra seemed happy as well. The ten wards immediately kneeled down and greeted me, 
and Cherries gave a respectful head bow to me, as he stand behind Voldora. Well, Cherries is technically under Voldora's command, so I wouldn't expect her to greet me enthusiastically like the others. Rimuru, missed me already? Voldora laughed, eyes shining in amusement. Ramrus just snickered. Of course, she would join her mentor's parade. Shut up, old man. You too, Ramrus. I lightly scolded them. But there is hardly any heat in my words. I'm actually glad because it helped me shake off the feeling of anxiousness I felt earlier. So, what's going on? I asked as I went straight to the vacant seat next to Voldora. It's not because I want to sit beside him. It's just that the chair is the nearest to me. A.N. Wakei Rimuru. Uwake hahaha. Ramrus started giving me a detailed explanation of how they are renovating the labyrinth and how the ten wards are managing each of their floors. I'm impressed by the systematic approach they took in fixing the damages. It looks great, and I doubt they would even need my help. They can do things on their own. That's great it seems like it's looking good. Keep it up guys. I complimented them. That seemed to lift up their spirits since they were all smiles. We continued discussing things and before we know it, it's snack time. How do I know? Because the dryads manifested themselves into the room holding multiple trays of food. Had it been that long since we started the meeting? I felt like we just started. Oh well. I was planning to enjoy my meal, but this was the time when things started to get downhill. I don't normally lose my temper that much dot, but for some reason, my patience is not that long today. There are three tables that could occupy at least five persons, so automatically I am seated with Voldora, Remoris, and Cherries. After the Dryad served us our food, they left and said they will be back once we are done. I was supposed to start eating, but I immediately noticed how Cherries is attending to Voldora. I mean, I knew that he was kind of like a servant to Voldora, since he named him and all. But it just felt so wrong watching someone else assisting Voldora in front of my face. He's just a servant, nothing more nothing less. I kept chanting in my head, as I gripped my chopsticks trying to remain calm. I was never like this before, and besides, I do not feel like this towards Shuna whenever she's attending to Voldora. This might be a mood swing. Answer. As a true dragon subspecies, you have inherited some of their minor attributes, such as being territorial. Me? Territorial? Over him? No. Report. My lord's brain activity indicates a high level of stress relating to the individual cherries. This could also mean that master is experiencing an emotional phenomenon called jealousy. I am not jealous. Why would I need to be? I thought as I scoffed inside my head. With my internal dilemma, I did not notice that my tablemates are looking at me weirdly. They must have thought I'm a lunatic for glaring at my food, looking like I want to murder someone. Are you okay, Ramuru? Ramrus asked. Voldora stared at me as if waiting for my response. I just smiled at them and assured them I'm okay and just made an excuse. Ramrus and Cherry seemed to buy it, but I knew Voldora didn't, since I can still feel him staring at me. What? I asked as started to eat my meal. I'm fine, just eat your food, old man. That's right, Voldora-sama. Your food will turn cold. I've also removed some of these vegetables for you since I know you didn't like them. Cherry seconded. Now that irked me even more. He did what? When did they get so close? Answer. Due to being locked together in Master's stomach, they have spent most of their time playing shogi or getting to know each other. You have my thanks, Cherries. Kuahaha. Voldora seemed to be oblivious to the situation. I just continued eating and continued observing them. Cherries is an excellent servant, I must admit. But his attitude towards Voldora is something I cannot explain. He's doting on him as if. Answer. No, don't answer that. I don't want to hear it. I am trying to keep my cool and eat peacefully with these people. Understood. Voldora seemed to notice my silence and tried talking with me through thought communication. Hey, what's up with that gloomy face? I don't know what you're talking about. You've been quiet the entire time. Voldora insisted. I know he can feel my emotions through our bond. Just a little stressed, but it will go away. I tried to assure him. If he believes it or not is not my problem. I just can't say that I'm jealous or something. Because I am not. I was about to say something to at least start a conversation when I saw Cherries reaching for Voldora's face with a napkin in his hands. Pardon my forwardness. But you do have some stain on your chin, Voldora-sama. I heard Cherry say as he wiped the stain on Voldora's chin. I want to applaud myself for maintaining my composure and not breaking the table. I just can't say the same for my chopsticks though because they broke in half despite being the metal kind. Ramrus might have caught on because I can see her in my peripheral vision, having a nervous look on her face while looking between me and the two. 
Uh, um, Ramuru, would you like me to ask Trini Chan to bring you new chopsticks? Ramrus asked, unsure how to approach me. The two people who have been causing me these unwanted feelings looked at my hand holding the broken chopsticks. No, it's all right, Ramrus. I think I lost my appetite, I said, while trying to maintain my poker face. Report. Master's brain activity indicates a high level of frustration and anger. Cause. Individual. Cherries. Would you like me to activate King of Gluttony? Belzebut to dispatch the cause of your distress? Now, that's too hasty. As much as it looks appealing right now, no thanks. Despite how I feel, he's Voldora's friend. I'm just being stupid getting worked up over this. Answer. Regardless of any situation, Master's feelings are always valid. Thanks for the support, Seal. Sometimes, I really feel like Seal is my comfort person. Seal's not really a person, but I know she always has my back regardless of how petty my situation is just like right now. Always, my lord. I think I need to go. I forgot that I need to do something. I stated after a while, standing up and ready to teleport myself out of the labyrinth. This got me a concerned look from Ramrus and Voldora. Cherries is just sitting there still staring at Voldora. I will come with you. Voldora then declared as he grabbed my wrist. This snapped Cherries out of his daydreaming or whatever. I don't really want him to come since I need to cool my head off. All of these feelings are new to me. I never had to feel like this before. I was single my whole life. And besides I must have been too overconfident about our relationship that it never crossed my mind. That there would be people that could potentially harbor feelings for Voldora. I mean, who wouldn't? Despite his obnoxious attitude, he's actually kind, funny, and caring. I was about to decline him when Cherry stood up and started speaking. But Voldora Sama, you said you will be participating in our training today. You also have to help Ramrus Sama in building some of the infrastructures here. No, no, no. It's okay, mine's not urgent anyway. Mentor, you can just come back when you're ready. Ramrus immediately cut off. I appreciate her supporting me and speaking for me, because I don't know if I can control myself. If I started opening my mouth, I guess Cherries can't read the room because he's still trying to convince Voldora to stay. But Master, you promised that we'll train today. The other lords of the labyrinth seem to have stopped eating when they heard our little commotion. So there are like 10 pairs of eyes watching us now. God, I wanted to leave now. Don't worry. I will be back later, Voldora said softly, as if trying to appease cherries. That fueled my irritation. Why would you need to comfort him? I am the one angry here. I wanted to yell. But nothing seemed to come out of my mouth. If I stay here longer with them acting this way, I will definitely blow up. I don't want that to happen, Dodd. I removed his grip from my wrist and moved away a little to activate spatial domination. Cherries might have thought that this is his chance because he immediately grabbed the opportunity. See, I think Ramuru sama needs to be alone anyway, Cherry stated, looking at me expectantly, as if asking me to support his claims, the audacity. Now, I'm telling you, I am a very lenient and patient person. Shuna even once said that I have a heart as white as the oceans. I am not that petty. But I decided that today. I will be. I stopped the spatial domination spell and looked at him. I used Lord's ambition as walked towards him. Cherries, is it? I do not think you are in the position to speak for me or to decide for Voldora, I said calmly, though my aura says differently. The situation might have shocked him because he might have not expected me to be angry at him since he's under Voldora's command. Ramuru sama Silence I commanded. I know I am being irrational with how I am releasing my aura with all these people around the room but they are all powerful monsters protecting the labyrinth. They should be able to withstand my aura. I do not understand where you get your confidence for testing my patience like this. How do you think should I punish you? Ramuru-sama, I don't know what I have done to upset you, but he paused and looked at Voldora asking for help. Voldora looked lost. He is not the leader type and for sure has never treated Cherries as a total subordinate. So, regardless of who named Cherries, Voldora might have thought that I am still technically the leader of all the residents in Tempest. Whatever punishments or rewards will still be under my jurisdiction. He's half right though since we bonded, any monster connected to him will now also be connected to me. Though we still have an option to filter who's with who, we still haven't discussed it yet. And looking at him, he's not that comfortable punishing someone he considers a friend. B. But I am under Voldora Sama's command and. Oh, is that the reason why you think you can disrespect me in front of my face? I asked coldly, cutting him off. I can detect a few of the ten lords of the labyrinth getting scared. They might have not seen me getting furious with any of my subordinates before, but decided to stay put and not meddle. They probably don't want to be on the receiving end of my anger too. Good choice. Dot. I'm just glad that Zijin is there to protect Ramrus from my aura, 
I'll make sure to thank him later. Ramuro forgive him, he doesn't know. Voldora tried to calm me. He held my hand and squeezed my hand tight. He might have finally realized what is going on. I should stop here, I know. But I just can't the images of cherries taking care of Voldora instead of me are making me angrier by the second. He will be the lesson for anyone who wants to try anything with Voldora. Someone had to be the sacrifice. And he's just the best example to do that. What I'm curious about is why you desperately wanted him to stay here with you. I narrowed my eyes at him. Voldora stiffened at the implication of my words. He probably want to assure me nothing is going on, but I squeezed his hand back as a warning to stay put. If not for his hand holding mine, my hand would be around Cherry's neck, he should be at least glad that I'm not doing anything. Yet dot. I I just Voldora Sama said H he would be tea training with you us today. So I just thought he stammered out looking very pale as he looked at our held hands. I do not think that's just all, isn't it? Ramuru Sama. I do not want to hear it. I do not care whatever relationship you built with him while you were confined inside of me. I am grateful that you were able to accompany him through those times. But that stops now. He's mine, and if I decided to take him with me, he will come with me whether you like it or not. He doesn't owe you his time and absolutely does not need your permission. You were released and named for the sole purpose of being his assistant while he's working. All his personal needs are mine to take of. So, I am expecting you to act more professionally around him. His eyes widened after hearing what I said, and I can see that the lords are probably shocked too, since I can see some of them with their jaws dropped. I am going to announce it in the Wolpurgis anyway, so at this point, I don't really care who knows. This might also work best on my end too. This way, Hey, no one would attempt anything funny. Got it. I can see him growing paler by second. He nodded quickly, his words betraying him. He tried to maintain holding himself up, and kudos to him for not actually slumping down the floor. I stared at him for a while longer before I nodded in return a little satisfied. Serves him right. I concealed the Lord's ambition and snapped my attention to our little audience. They jumped a little when they noticed I am looking at them. I hope you all understood what I meant right? I smiled the kind that doesn't reach my eyes. They just nodded probably still scared shitless. Good. Let's go, Voldora. Ramaris, I'll leave everything to you. Ramaris flew in front of my face and grabbed a few strands of my hair. I'll take care of everything. Take your time, she said softly as if trying to comfort me. I appreciate her, really. Zijin, make sure to assist Ramaris I ordered. The Mist Lord stood up and bowed. As you wish, my lord. Satisfied, I teleported us out of the labyrinth. As soon as the two left the room, everyone immediately released the breath they didn't know they were holding. Ramaris flew her way to Cherries, who was now slumped on the floor. Are you okay? Ramaris asked as she fluttered around the flame lord. I I am sorry Ramaris Sama for causing the disturbance. He apologized. It's okay. You don't need to be sorry Cherry still looked guilty and a little shaken up. She can't blame him. After that incident with Ramuru anyone would feel the same way. Even she was scared shitless. Do you think Ramuru Sama would ever forgive me for my insolence? Cherries asked. He never knew that it would go this way. He knew he got carried away and got too comfortable. For sure, Ramuru is not the kind that holds grudges. As long as you maintain professionalism, no need to worry. Ramrus assured him. The other lords with them agreed but still looked a little pale. I I do not want to experience that ever Apito commented, still remembering her lords or earlier. I agree, I almost felt like shitting myself earlier, you know. And he's not even angry at me Alberto added, slumping himself down to his chair. I didn't know that our god Ramuru Sama is in that kind of relationship with our guardian deity either Adalman said, still quite in shock. Well, they have been together for a while now, and considering their unique relationship, you should expect Ramuru to be like that for a while. So, I suggest to not try to attempt anything funny. Not just with Mentor, but with Ramuru as well. Mentor might be isagoing, but I just know that he won't take it well either if any one of you makes a move towards Ramuru. We do not want him rampaging and destroying the whole labyrinth if that happens. Keep that in mind, Ramrus warned. They all gulped, probably imagining the labyrinth being blown by Voldora. She knows that her friend Ramuru has a lot of admirers within his following. So to prevent another almost killing spree that happened earlier, the least she can do is make them understand their boundaries. We would never attempt. I wouldn't dare. Doing that is just unthinkable, are the most common statement Ramrus heard from the people in the room. She smiled glad they understood. She then asked everyone to resume their session from earlier, 
so they can start working on their plans. Somewhere in Tempest, there are two individuals who are having a rather different session. Aside from Tempest, Rimuru also has to deal with the current situation with the Empire. After losing the war, Rimuru wanted to help them rebuild their country and establish good relations with them moving forward. Since the news of their victory already reached their allied countries and the Western Holy Church, there would be a meeting held to figure out the next steps. It was reported to Ramuru that Velgren helped Ramrus and the others, with the fight against Fledway's minions, when they were trying to capture Masayuki. Since most of Rudra's soul is within Masayuki, Velgren seemed to be content just staying by Masayuki's side. Ramuru hadn't seen her since the last time they parted. The meeting will be held after lunch, so Ramuru has a little time to spare to hold a meeting with just his executives, since he thought most of them already knew about his relationship with Voldora. There is no more point in hiding it from everyone. After all, they are his family. At the very least he wanted them to know the news first before everyone else. As soon as he entered the meeting room, everyone was a little confused. They all have tasks to do since the meeting will be held later but they received an order to delegate their tasks to their right-hand men in the meantime for an emergency meeting. They stood and bowed at Rimuru upon seeing him. As usual, Rimuru just smiled and greeted them back. The people joining the meeting are the usual people so Rimuru feels at home and doesn't feel that nervous. Anyhow, most of the people attending the meeting already knew about his relationship. He just wanted to make it official, per se. All right, no need to be so formal today. The topic of today's meeting is a little personal. Rimuru started as he took a seat. Everyone shared a look. This is not what they were expecting. I wanted to be honest with you and clear something up before everyone else knows about this Rimuru continued. His executives still looked confused. So he decided to not beat around the bush and just flat out say it. I'm in a relationship with Voldora he paused and let the other executives process that information. They looked so shocked it was so funny, but Rimuru decided against laughing at them. This is a serious moment. By in a relationship do you mean it was Rigard who hesitated to ask? Rimuru just nodded in confirmation. The next reaction was not one that he expected. They cheered. Even Ranga howled in happiness. Rimuru Kinda expected them to ask further and be skeptical or even be scared, but their reaction was heartwarming. The others who already knew were just either grinning or clapping with the others. When the excitement died down a little, they started asking how they should celebrate and what to call this special holiday. Tempestians really love festivities, don't they? Well, Rimuru is not about to complain, he feels happy too. Well, a lot of Rimuru Sama's admirers will be heartbroken when they hear about this Haruna giggles. Well, for Rimuru, that doesn't sound right. He doesn't feel like he's actually popular. If he is, then he should have at least a girlfriend before Voldora. Answer. Master never paid attention since you've already decided that you were for Voldora Sama since the beginning. Well, I never knew that we'd actually be together, you know. For sure, Voldora Sama has a lot of admirers too, so. I wonder what will happen Rarina giggle back. The moment she said that Ramuru's higher executive stiffened and started looking at Rarina, as if she said something bad. A she looked confused because Xian was signaling her to stop talking behind Ramuru. Diablo is also shaking her head. Good thing Ranga is occupying Ramuru's attention at this time, and was not able to hear that comment. Shuna decided to intervene as well. She heard about what happened to his brother, Sawe and Xian. At the moment, they never know what would set off their lord. So she wanted to make sure that they will all come alive after this meeting. Haruna Chan, Rarina San, help me prepare some tea and cake, Shuna said and forced the two out of the room. The other half sighed in relief the remaining were totally oblivious. Before Ramuru can continue the meeting and discuss the situation in detail, someone or rather a few people barged in. Ramuru Emergency Master and Velgrind are fighting, Ramra sat as she flies towards Ramuru's face. What? With that, all of them rushed towards the area where they were fighting. Everyone saw the battle in the sky. They don't know what to do. Masayuki is looking helpless as he watched Velgren fight as well. They were just having a tour in the labyrinth when she saw Voldora, and after that, she started attacking Voldora. Rimuru immediately activated a barrier to prevent any harm befall to any regular citizens. Rimuru is not in the mood to seize Velgren again, especially not today. He narrowed his eyes at the two figures fighting above. No killing intent detected from individual. Velgrind. No killing intent. Positive. This can be an example of a sibling squabble. 
Squabble? She looks like she wants to send Voldora to the afterlife. Before Rimuru can intervene, Voldora cam rushing down towards him. Rimuru, save me, Voldora said and hid behind Rimuru. Velgrind is looking down at the eyebrow twitching from his brother's cowardice. What did you do this time? Rimuru asked, since Seal assured him that no killing intent was detected. He's a little calm. I didn't do anything, I just saw her, and she immediately dragged me outside to fight. Voldora looked pitiful enough that Ramuru believed him. Stop hiding behind Ramuru, you stupid coward little brother, Velgrin shouted as she slowly descended from the sky. Long time no see Ramuru casually greeted. He doesn't really want to deal with all this at this time. So, he decided that he'll just have to talk this out to Velgrind. You, don't greet me as if you are not as guilty as him. Velgrind shouted and stormed her way to Ramuru. Although Voldora is technically afraid of his sister, he would not let anyone harm his mate when he's around. He doesn't think that his sister would actually hurt Ramuru considering their agreement, but his instinct is screaming at him to protect. Is this what Ramuru was feeling for the past few days? Voldora can't help but think. He never understood the sudden change with Ramuru, but he's not complaining. He secretly loved how protective his little demon lord became after they mated. Though he doesn't actually need protection, he can't help but be endeared. No one had ever dared to think of protecting them, since their race is actually the strongest out there. It feels nice to have someone care for you like that. But now he understood. His little bouts of jealousy and irritation for all his mate's admirers do not compare to this instinctual urge to protect and possess his mate. He stopped hiding behind Ramuru and stood in front of him instead, facing his sister head on. His earlier childish attitude is now thrown out of the window and replaced with a serious one. Everyone around can feel the atmosphere drop the moment Voldora stood in front of Ramuru. His executives are on the edge, not liking where this was going. This scene is utterly familiar to them. They keep eyeing their lord, preparing for any outburst. I'll have to advise you to stay where you are dearest sister Voldora stated. Seriously, Velgrin seemed to be taken aback by the sudden change of attitude, and she definitely knew why which made her angrier. So, what now? You're getting angry that I'm aiming for Ramuru? Velgrin sneered, taunting his brother even more. I'm really hoping you did not imply that you actually intend to aim at him. Sister Wynne started to get harsher by the second. Warning, Master Voldora's aura is getting out of control. Would you like to take over the Selbind? I'll try to calm him down first, Seal Sensei. If it comes to the worst case scenario, I'll do that. Understood. Rimuru understood Voldora's sudden change of attitude, since he's still somehow like that too. But he's trying to control it especially after realizing how many people he has intimidated, just because he can't control his feelings. Hey, Voldora, I do not think she would attack me. Calm down, Ramuru tried to reason. He went to his side and rubbed his biceps, in order to divert his attention to him. But his sister is really making it hard. Don't even try, Ramuru. Let him be angry and go on a rampage. Then I'll teach him a lesson. Everyone panicked and started evacuating lower class monsters, demons, humans around the area to the labyrinth. Your Majesty, please evacuate with us. This is a dangerous place. Ramuru heard someone say as they try to drag Masayuki out of the danger zone. What about Velgrin san Velgrin sama is strong. We will all get killed if you get hurt, Masayuki sama. Someone begged. Ramuru just watched them drag everyone to the labyrinth for safety. Velgrin san, I am assuming that you already know what's going on. With that knowledge, I hope you also understand that you no longer have the right to punish him or hurt him, right? Ramuru stated as calmly as he possibly can. Ramuru looked at Voldora, and he doesn't seem to be backing down, his golden eyes piercing at his sister. Velgrin knew the slime had always been different. He's not just a normal monster. If he's able to evolve to be one of them, she doesn't think there would be anything that he does that would surprise her anymore, but how wrong she was. How can they do this and be okay? I know you're stupid, but I didn't know that you'll be this reckless. And what are you going to do about this? What's done is done Ramuru said as he walked in front of Voldora, trying to stop him from immediately charging towards his sister. Why are people always jumping to conclusions? Why can't they just ask nicely? Ha, huh, unbelievable. You go around saying you want peace, then you go around doing reckless things? If this goes out of hand and if my brother loses his mind, I will crush you. Veldrand always had a soft spot for his little brother. She remembered a time when his foolish little brother declared that he will find someone special like them and mate that person. She laughed at him. How could she not? Thinking about being able to mate is such an idealistic dream. They never considered it. It was an option that can cause either happiness or destruction. Considering no one ever tried, even his older brother Veldanava, the risk is just too great to even pursue it. 
But they've done it. She's not really angry, she's just worried about her brother. The slime is extraordinary, but can he withstand the mating for long? If he perishes, Voldora would definitely cause a major catastrophe. Do not even think of touching a single strand on his hair, sister. If you want to fight badly, I will give it to you. Voldora stated, pushing Ramuru to the side and walking towards his sister ready to attack. Velgren seemed to be preparing for offense as well. Ramuru just fascipumed. They just reconstructed the area around the labyrinth, and if they fight, Gel will have to redo it again. They have an important meeting today, and they cannot afford to fight like this. Ramuru is already losing his patience. Why does he have to deal with short-tempered true dragons every single time? When Voldora was about to sprint and attack his sister, Ramuru decided to intervene and decided to say the first thing that came to mind. Voldora, if you do not calm the fuck down, you will sleep on your own tonight, Ramuru angrily threatened. That halted Voldora's actions. He snapped his head back to Ramuru, said Demon Lord had his arms crossed his eyes narrowing at him. B but Ramuru you can't do that. Voldora whined. All of his fighting intent left his body at that threat. Sleeping together at night is the only time Voldora can spend time with his little Demon Lord. He can't spend the night alone. He flew his way back in front of his lover to complain and whine some more. But Ramuru is not having it. After all the efforts we put into rebuilding this area, will you damage it again? Have some sense of responsibility. Ramuru scolded, he ignored Velgren's confused face, and just continued lecturing Voldora. Voldora had some sense to look actually sorry, and apologize to the demon lord. Ramuru just sighed. Go back inside the labyrinth. I will speak with your sister Voldora was about to open his mouth to resist. But one look from his little demon lord made him shut up. If I go back inside I will not spend the night alone Voldora can't help but ask, he has to make sure. If you're not back there in three seconds you will and with that, Voldora vanished and teleported himself back in the labyrinth's control room. Velgren knew these two were comrades. Based on the last fight, she assumed that they were just really close friends. So, when she found out they mated, she thought that the demon lord might be using his brother for his ideals, manipulating him into mating with him for an eternal commitment. But witnessing this little banter, it looks like his brother indeed found his match. Voldora is not one that you can actually threaten or command. Even if he's acting like he's afraid, he still does whatever he wants, hence, resulting in multiple forced reincarnations, due to Velzard's extreme punishments. But seeing him like this with the demon lord, Mayer realized that he achieved his childhood dream. Who would have thought that it's even possible? She shouldn't have laughed at him. She saw the demon lord looking at her, waiting for her to say something. I want you to tell me something she started. The demon lord just nodded at her. What's your intentions? Ramiro blinked. Intentions? Why does he feel like being interrogated by in-laws? I don't have any Ramuru simply said. That's the truth. It's not like he will use Voldora. He's still as free as he is before. He can do whatever he pleases as long as it will not cause any damage or interfere with Ramuru's job. Really? Then why did you commit yourself to him? Velgren can't just seem to believe that there is nothing more into this. It's the same reason as to why you stayed with Rudra's side for the longest time. The same reason why you traveled time and space just to find his souls. Ramuru said, looking at her eyes. Velgren seemed taken aback by that statement. After a few moments of silence, Velgren just sighed, then smiled, and walked towards Ramuru. Take care of him is what she decided to say. Ramuru smiled and nodded. With that, they were able to prevent another catastrophe level damage. As the executives were evacuating their people. They were also worried about their lord. Since the first 50 floors were easily damaged before, they opted to evacuate people on the 95th floor. When they were all settled, the officers, including the Labyrinth Guardians, Dryads, Beretta, and Cherries, Masayuki Yang, some of the Empire's former military officers, went to the control room to monitor the soon-to-be match outside. When the Storm Dragon took a stance to attack, they all tensed, and they were silently preparing for the worst. Voldora, if you do not calm the fuck down, you will sleep on your own tonight. They heard their lord shout. They saw how the storm dragon stopped mid-attack upon hearing that. They all blushed a little considering the implication of that statement. Well, they should get used to it. They saw how the storm dragon was whining and complaining like a spoiled child. But he can't still win against the demon lord. They, ha even I would back down if my wives threatened me like that Benamere scoffed. 
thinking about his two pregnant wives. Most of the men in a relationship in the room agreed, nodding their heads. H hold on, does that mean Rumuru is Masayuki stammered, he never thought that those two are in a relationship like that, he knew that they are close, someone told him about them being best friends of something, this is a shocker, whatever you are thinking, you are correct Diablo said, confirming Masayuki's unspoken question, well, considering Lord Rumuru's power plus Lord Voldora being a true dragon and them being together, I can safely say that Tempest is now the strongest country out there Calgurio commented the other officers of the empire, nodding in agreement. Well, let's just be glad we're already pardoned. If some idiot of a country even dared to attack them right now, they would be no match for them. I mean, it's Rumuru-sama, and a true dragon himself, waging war with Tempest, is a suicidal move the Tempest executive looked proud, appreciating the compliment. However, there seemed to be a misconception that they felt like they need to correct. It's nice that you think that way, however, Rumuru-sama is not the type to use Voldora-sama's power to strengthen his military power. In most cases, Voldora-sama is not permitted to join the fight. He's only allowed to interfere if things go south, but that never happened before until the recent war. So, most of the time, Rumuru-sama always tasked Voldora-sama to guard the city, instead Rigard explained. They do not want them to think that Tempest military power is solely relying on the Storm Dragon's strength. Ha, huh, to think that I would see the day that someone would be able to even command the Storm Dragon, this is unbelievable. Well, that's Rumuru-sama we are talking about Xion stated, looking boastful. Of course, everyone in Tempest always like to boast about their lord to anyone willing to listen. What about Rumuru? Voldora asked as he materialized himself in the control room. Everyone was a little shocked by his sudden appearance since they were all busy talking. They easily recovered and greeted him. Nothing Voldora-sama, we're just saying how amazing Rumuru-sama is considering his recent battles Shuna immediately answered. Ha, huh, of course, that's Rumuru for you Voldora himself look proud. He always is. Ever since they met, Voldora knew that his little lover will be different. Everyone saw the soft look the storm dragon has on his face while talking about their lord. They can't help but smile. Then, as if hit by lightning, Rigard knelt down and bowed his head. On behalf of everyone. We would like to congratulate you on your recent mating Voldora-sama, that was enough for everyone to follow suit. Congratulations, everyone cheered. Voldora was taken aback, confusion was written all over his face. Looks like Ramuru already told them about your relationship mentor. Ramrus explained upon noticing Voldora's confused face. Oh oh I see, kuwahaha, thank you, everyone. Voldora decided to laugh it off as usual, despite feeling a little embarrassed inside. Rimuru told him that he would announce it to the executives, but he did not expect this type of reaction. You can't blame him though, the first few reactions they got when their relationship was made known were a little fierce so to say. The officials of the empire became rooted in their spots, unable to process what they just heard. Mated, this is downright insane. Of course, they knew about it, since Felgren was the guardian of the empire and a true dragon. They were knowledgeable about true dragon's culture per se. A lot of the officials from the empire wished for their emperor and the scorched dragon, to be mated upon learning the power both will have if they do so. They believed that that would make the empire an undefeatable force, but when someone suggested that, that person was burned to crisps by Velgrind. Hence, none of the officials ever talked about it ever since. But it seemed like demon Lord Rimuru is really one of his kind. He could really do anything. Congratulations, Voldora Sama Kalgurio stated after recovering from the shock, the other officials followed suit. Congratulations about what? Velgrind asked as she walked towards them. Voldora lost the smile on his face, everyone was tense. Where's Ramuru? He asked his sister. Velgrin smirked, normally she would taunt and tease her brother, but her earlier encounter with the demon lord made her a little bit indulgent today. He went to the city's entrance, looked like someone came uninvited after hearing that. Xion and Diablo immediately teleported where their lord is to see what's going on. I think it's almost time for the meeting, should we all gather in the meeting room? Benimaru suggested that they all gather in the newly built conference room. All the officials needed for the meeting started going with the Tempest executives, the rest remained in the control room. The meeting is composed of representatives from Tempest, East Empire, and Worgen. Rimuru sat on the north part of the table, Masayuki on the east, and King Gazel on the west. Seated beside them were their trusted advisors and military commanders. Testarasa is going to be the moderator of this meeting. As soon as everyone was seated comfortably, Testarasa convened the meeting. 
First, I would like to set proper expectations about how this meeting will go. There might be questions that you may have. While we are discussing the course of action we will take moving forward, I would like to advise everyone to take note of your questions for later, and listen first to what is being discussed as your question may be answered as we proceed with the meeting. If it has not been clarified, we will have a question and answer portion by the end of the meeting. Testarasa paused and looked at everyone to see if someone will object, but considering the silence, she assumed that everyone understood. To start, the objectives of this meeting are as follows. 1. Declaration of the end of the war with Eastern Empire. 2. Finalization of the end of war agreement. And 3. Creation of a new treaty for future relations between our countries. Any objections? No objection. King Gazel answered for Dwargan. Masayuki looked like he didn't know what to say, so Velgren decided to cover for him. I don't see anything wrong with that. We can proceed Velgren confirmed for the East Empire. If there are no objections, let's start with examining the status quo first, shall we? Rimuru said after gaining mutual agreements from other leaders. I would like to request for everyone not to interrupt Testarasa as she explains. I will give the floor to each leader after to entertain some of your questions, and clarifications Ramuru continued. He and not to signal Testarasa to start. She started narrating the battle on the airship, and immediately explained Emperor Rudra's situation, and Ramuru's victory over Velgrind. King Gazel immediately interrupted upon hearing that. Wait Testarasa gently reminded her of the house rules implemented at the start of the meeting. I understand, I know I am being rude, but I have to apologize. But, shouldn't we be discussing this in front of Lord Velgrind here? Gazel stated, a little nervous since they are basically talking about the Scorched Dragon's loss in front of her face. Velgrind just shrugged, I see no problem here, Dwarf King. You're a very thoughtful man compared to Ramuru over there Velgrind said with a little smirk, as she looked at Ramuru pointedly. Rudra has high praises for you, and even wanted you as a subordinate back then. No need to be so formal. Just talk normally Velgrind assured, sensing the king's anxiety. But even then, it's not enough for King Gazel. But of course, as a true dragon and the guardian of the Eastern Empire for centuries, certainly this is. Don't worry about it, after all, what was said is true. I lost to him Velgrin confirmed. King Gazel and the others have their jaws dropped to the floor. They could not believe that one of the strongest beings was defeated. I won't be surprised anymore, I'm not even over the primordials yet, and this as far as Tempest and King Ramuru is concerned, I guess, anything goes Granny Jane commented on the side dwarf nodding in agreement with her. After that was over, they also discussed the skill that had overtaken the emperor. Masayuki was declared as the new emperor of the empire, and lastly, they also discussed how the empire would like to do future relations with other countries. Good thing no more interruptions were made, and the meeting went smoothly. As they were about to finish but Masayuki spoke up. Before the meeting ends, I would also like to congratulate you on your recent mating, Rimuru Masayuki greeted happily. He was so shocked earlier he was not able to personally congratulate him, so he took this chance. Velgrin wanted to laugh at Rimuru's reaction. As soon as that statement was heard, King Gazel looked at Rimuru for an explanation. What's going on Rimuru? Well, just like what they said, I just got mated Rimuru said, a little embarrassed to be put on the spot. I heard that but to who? You never introduced anyone before do we know the lucky person? King Gazel probed. It's my brother, Voldora Velgren answered for him. Smirking. Rimuru doesn't know if he should be happy with the intervention or not. It looks like she's having fun with his situation. Holy Mother of God Rimuru heard someone say, probably Granny Jane. Rimuru internally facepalmed. King Gazel was too stunned to speak. I'm just so happy that I do not need to report this whole thing this time, or else I would lose my shit someone from Dwargan's side stated. Velgren San is correct, I am indeed mated with Voldora. I appreciate your congratulations, Masayuki, Rimuru said, smiling at his friend. He doesn't want to make this more awkward by keeping silent. So you mean to say you and the storm dragon Rimuru nodded? King Gazel can't seem to wrap his head around the thought. Considering the meeting that transpired, it's already a given for Tempest to be considered as the strongest force, but for their lord to be mated to the strongest race to ever exist, they could wipe the entire world if they so wanted. The power that they hold will be unmatched ever, unless the other true dragons will be mated as well. After a little while, King Gazel decided that there's nothing that he could do about this anymore. He just needs to make sure to be on Tempest's side forever for the sake of his country. 
When the meeting ended, they went to the largest Ryakin reserved for nobles' royalties to have a feast. Everyone enjoyed their food, as usual, complimenting the chefs for a job well done. Rimuru was happy looking at the satisfied guests. Their feast turned into a drinking party soon after. Seal Sensei, can you try to reduce my resistance for tonight? I want to get blasted. Denied. Master had low alcohol tolerance. There is a high probability that you will pass out from too much drinking. Rude. Excuse me ma'am, I can control my liquor. Based on Master's previous memories. Stop. Those are the things of the past okay? I am a better drinker now. Come on Seal Sensei. Fine. But don't ask for my help after. Are you sulking? Silent treatment. Huh. After that, Rimuru starts drinking and he can feel himself getting tipsy. He can to miss the feeling. With Seal always guarding his well-being and the resistances he has, he never felt sick. Sometimes, things like this make him feel more alive, make his existence a little bit more real. After his fifth glass, he doesn't know what's going on already. His world is spinning. All he knows is that he's happy. He's with his family, his closest friends, and allies. The worst can come later, but for now, he's high on this feeling. Rimuru sama I think it's time to call it a night Rimuru heard someone say, but he can't really tell, he feels like he's underwater. Um arg who are yo Rimuru tried to stand up but almost dropped. He's swaying on his feet. It's Diablo Rimuru sama The demon made sure to watch closely just in case his lord fall. I think Rimuru sama is drunk, Venimeru commented. Obviously, brother, Diablo, keep him occupied. Someone, please call for Voldora sama Shuna asked one of their servers. Before the server can step out of the room Voldora materializes behind Rimuru, catching him just before he falls face first on the floor. No need for that everyone sighed in relief. The delegates of Dwargan and Empire stiffened and went on alert mode, as soon as they felt the Storm Dragon's presence. Rimuru realized that he's being held by someone and forced himself to look at the person. Oh you are a handsome man. I like your face, but I already have someone so please let go of me Evoldora smirked. This is the first time that he saw his lover disheveled and drunk. He should make the most out of this. Oh ho, tell me about this man Voldora decided to play the part. He's he's an idiot Rimuru said after a while. Everyone snickered at that statement. Voldora sweat dropped. But he's my idiot and I love him so get away. Rimuru said as he tried to wiggle his way out of Voldora's grasp. Voldora smiled so hard at that. Must be a lucky guy Voldora commented. Rimuru hummed in confirmation. I think you should get him home Velgren stated. He knew that his brother was having the time of his life but she knew that the Tempest leader would not appreciate it once she knew what happened. I probably should. Well good night everyone. Voldora then carried his lover bridal style and teleported to his room in the labyrinth. Once the two disappeared, the others were left to ponder. Ah I never thought I'd get to see Rimuru-sama that drunk. He's always compassed rigored started. Well, good thing he has Voldora-sama now. I wouldn't know how I would deal with a drunk Rimuru Sama Benimaru added. Well, looks like Tempest will have a very bright future, considering your leader's healthy relationship Granny Jane said, sincerely. I just can't believe that I would ever witness a true dragon mating someone out of their race. Rimuru Sama is really exceptional. That's actually a wrong assumption Velgrind interjected while sipping her wine. Rimuru evolved as a true dragon subspecies after defeating Voldora, so technically, he's partly a true dragon which would explain his great compatibility with Voldora, making their mating possible Velgrind explained. Everyone, aside from the Tempest executives, was shocked for the NTH time today. I'm just glad Rimuru-sama is a kind demon lord. I do not want to be on his bad side, ever someone from the Empire said, which is probably what the other delegates were thinking. Don't worry, Rimuru-sama wishes for peace among races. He would not wage war with other countries unless you're hostile against Tempest or his allied countries, for no reason Xion said. With that, everyone continued partying celebrating the end of the war and their lord's greatness. Voldora is quite endeared. His little demon lord is sleeping soundly on top of his chest. His cute cheeks pressed against his chest. The storm dragon had been over the moon when Rimuru confessed his love for him in front of their allies. Although it was said because Rimuru was drunk, Voldora doesn't care. At least now, almost everyone knows that they are together and would not dare flirt with him. Voldora may not show I it, but he had always been insecure about his position in Rimuru's life prior to the mating. He is aware of all Rimuru's admirers. It's not like he's listing names, but if he were that would be one hell of a long list. He felt like he needed to prove himself somehow. But ever since mating, he never felt the need to do that anymore. Regardless of how many people like Rimuru, he'll always be his, and that's enough for him. 
When Ramuru opened his eyes, he immediately felt pain coursing through his skull. He groaned from pain. He's a little confused as to why his head hurt in the first place. Seems like someone's grumpy. It's just your imagination. Come on seal, help me out here. I warned master yesterday that you should not lower your resistance due to your low alcohol tolerance. However, master decided to go against me. I have proceeded with the request, and this headache results from your request. Ramuru sweat dropped. Are you subtly saying that I should deal with it since it is my fault? No, I am merely explaining the phenomena that caused your headache master. All right, all right, I get it, I'm sorry. Can you please help me now with my headache? Seal can really be sassy when he wants to be. Pain nullification activation success. Thanks, Seal Sensei. You're the best. HMPH. Now, Rimuru realizes that he is not in his cottage. He's in Voldora's room, but the owner of the room is nowhere to be found. When he heard the sound of flowing water from the bathroom, he figured that Voldora must be taking a bath. Without much thinking, he decided that he would join his lover in the shower, you know, to save time and water. When he opened the door, he saw Voldora's back facing him. He can't help but admire his body. Like he'd seen this multiple times, but he still can't believe that it's all his. Without turning to face him, he heard Voldora's teasing. Record it so it will last longer. Rimuru did not know where his confidence was coming from, but instead of retorting back with his usual half-hearted insults, he just walked towards his dragon and hugged him from behind, his hands casually caressing the man's torso, before he decided to settle and enjoy this moment. While his little demon lord is having the time of his life, Voldora on the other hand is controlling every fiber of his to stop himself from ravishing Ramuru. To prevent himself from thinking lewd thoughts about his lover, he decided to talk instead. What's the occasion? Voldora can't help but ask. It's not Ramuru's style to be this clingy so early in the morning. He has not always been a morning person, so Voldora is not expecting this type of reaction from him. He loved it anyway. Hmm. Rimuru just hummed in response and rubbed his cheek on Voldora's back. The dragon just chuckled at his lover's cuteness. He removed the arms encircling his body, and turned to face his little demon lord. As soon as they were facing each other, Veldo lifted Rimuru and hoisted him up, guiding his slender legs to wrap around his waist, while he supported his upper body with his other arm. Rimuru, who kind of expected what his lover would do, immediately jumped on the opportunity and kissed his Voldora as soon as they were face to face. That caught the other man off guard, but he is not one to decline a feast when it's handed to him in a golden platter. Though Ramuru initiated the kiss, he let the older dragon take over as soon as their lips touched. This is one of the changes in their relationship that Ramuru personally loved after they got mated. He can finally let go and have someone to take the reins, have someone be in control for him. He never realized it before, but sometimes, being in control of everything is exhausting. While he loved taking the lead to make sure that everything was going smoothly within the country, sometimes, it's nice to have someone you can lean on. In his case, that person is currently ravishing him and giving him all the love and reassurance he never knew he needed before. After a couple of minutes of making out, Voldora chose to break the kiss, even if he didn't want to, because he was getting worried. I love this side of you, but I feel like there's more to this. What's going on? Voldora probed again, as he brushed some hair off of his lover's face. He can't feel any stress coming from their soul bond, and Seal also did not send any warning signs, so he's confused. I dunno I just can't believe that you were mine. Rimuru's absent-minded but cute response caused the storm dragon to laugh boisterously. Here he was worrying that something big was bothering his little demon lord, and all of a sudden he would hear him cutely confess his adoration for him. It's not every day that you will hear Rimuru be so sweet and meek, and Voldora wants to savor this feeling. Rimuru, realizing what he just did and said became so flustered his face became red. Well, everything he did and said is a reflection of his true feelings, so he wouldn't take it back, but still looking at this dragon enjoying his mortified state, makes him want to smack him. Stop blogging. Rimuru whined as he hid his face between his neck and shoulders. Voldora is still snickering while he decides to make his way to the bathtub and settle there so Rimuru can take a bath in a comfortable position on top of him. And this would also give him more time to soak with Rimuru. Once they are out of his room, he'll be working all day. So he wants to bask in this moment. While the two were enjoying their morning, Ramrus was having a busy morning because a certain someone decided to visit without notice. Ramrus and her appointed servants inside the labyrinth have been accustomed to Milam's visits, but ever since she became the new figurehead of three domains, 
they know that if ever she visits, that means she escaped from Free and Carrion. The said demon lord is currently sitting on one of the couches inside the Ramrus's research lab, while eating sweets and drinking J-U-I-C-E courtesy of Trainee. So when will Ramuru come? Milam asks as she finishes her third slice of cake. Ramrus, who is currently busy with her research and the task that Ramuru left him last time, just offhandedly responded to Milam. Probably a little later ever since he got together with Master, Ramuru comes to work a little bit later. Apparently Master is always having a hard time letting go of Ramuru every morning Ramrus said, still focused on whatever she was doing. Milam dropped the glass of tea she was holding after hearing Ramrus's explanation, which shocked the hell out of the little fairy. Hey, that shocked the hell out of me, be more careful Milam. What if Ramuru deducted the price of that glass from my salary? Ramrus shouted, not realizing what she had done. Her goal to be rich is her priority. What did you say Milam blankly asked, shocked to the core. Which part? I said a lot, Ramrus asked, exasperated. Milam, with the speed of light, was immediately in front of Ramrus. The first part, Ramuru and Voldora? Explain, ITTT. Milam shouted as she took the fairy in her hands, and started to shake her rather violently. Lady Milam, I don't think Master Ramrus can explain it if you don't stop shaking her, Beretta said, trying to calm Milam down. Thank God for her intervention. As soon as she stopped shaking the poor fairy, Ramrus realized what she said earlier. Oops, she was not supposed to share it before the Wolpurgis. She was so distracted she slipped. Um I don't think I'm allowed to explain it, Ramrus stated laughing awkwardly. Milam's face got even closer to her, pressuring her to tell her everything she knew. Ramrus knew that this little girl had a little crush on Ramuru. She might act childish or dumb sometimes, but she's quite observant. Milam may call Ramuru her bestie, but she knows that Milam probably felt more than that. Considering her lonely life, she might not know it herself. So, Ramrus, for all she's worth, does not want to be the one to break her heart. Who knows what she might do? She can be violent when she's upset. Ramrus shivered at the thought. Milam, figuring she wouldn't get any response from the fairy, looked around and stared at Ramrus's companions, Beretta and Cherries. Both individuals tried to appear busy so Milam will not ask them. They both witnessed Ramuru going batshit crazy, so they would not dare say anything that they are not allowed to. There are limits to what they can do and say, especially when it comes to their lord's newfound relationship. While Milam's wrath is scary, they can at least endure it unlike if it's their lord. They wouldn't know if they will actually survive. Before Milam could do anything to force out the information from Beretta or Cherries, one of the people in question appeared to save them. Master, Ramrus called out, relieved. She quickly flew far away from Milam and hid behind Voldora. Voldora, confused, asked them what was going on. Beretta was about to give a brief summary when Milam suddenly tried to punch Voldora in the face. Having quick reflexes, Voldora was able to dodge it. Wow, nice to see you too, my dear niece Voldora said, amused. What did you do to my bestie, you old fart? Milam shouted as she continuously tried to attack Voldora. Like a light bulb, Voldora now understood the hostility. Of course, this has to be about their relationship. Voldora, like the crackhead that he is, decided to tease his niece. Oh, I did a lot to him. Want a list? Voldora goaded as he dodged her kick. Ramrus, who's worried that her office will be destroyed, sent a message to the first person she thought of Xion. Please help me get these two dragons out of my lab. I might have told Milam about Ramuru and Master's relationship, and now, they are fighting here. Within less than two seconds, Xion appeared and was able to catch Milam's fist just in time. Stop meddling and get out of my way, Xion. I have bone to pick with that old man. Voldora just stuck his tongue out and teased Milam even more. If Xion was here, Ramrus might have called her out of panic. He decided to watch how she would handle the brat. The storm dragon could play with her some more if she wants to vent her anger, but he will have to drag her outside. Voldora does not want to make Ramuru angry by destroying the labyrinth. I totally understand how you feel, Milam Sama, but trust me, you wouldn't want to hurt Voldora Sama. Unless you wish to end your friendship with Ramuru sama Well, that was exaggerating it. Ramuru for sure will not end their friendship, but she will definitely get a lot of scolding. Regardless, that was enough to stop Milam's violent thoughts from racing. What? Why would he do that? We are besties for life. He will not do that just because of this old stinky dragon. Milam huffed, 
Xian sighed. He was once in this position oblivious. Ignorance is really a bliss. She looked at Voldora, asking for a silent confirmation that she was allowed to disclose the recent happenings. Voldora just shrugged. He doesn't really care who knows. With permission, Xian then continued. The last time some people tried to hurt Voldora-sama, Ramuru-sama almost ended their lives. For the sake of keeping good relations with Ramuru-sama, Please do not be hostile against, Voldora-sama. Milam cannot believe her ears, Ramuru her bestie tried to kill someone because of this old man? Just what happened while she was away studying with Free? Stop bluffing, Xian. Ramuru will not do that. He's a person who does not like violence. Milam seems to be in denial. Voldora smirked. He sat down on a chair and watched things unfold before him. This type of scene is getting familiar with him, and he knows that there will be more. Xian then explained why Ramuru could and would do it if it happened. Milam was shocked, to say the least when she heard that Ramuru mated Voldora. Just like you. We did not know so, I, Benmeru. So we, tried to confront Voldora-sama directly. You can also ask Diablo and the other three demonesses if it's true. We all experienced how to be at the end of Ramuru-sama's anger, because we attempted to fight Voldora-sama. Even if you are his bestie, Milam-sama, I do not think Ramuru-sama will let you off the hook if he learns about this. Xian explained seriously. She would normally support Milam on her impulsive thoughts and join her thirst for battle, but remembering how angry her lord was at that time. Xian does not want a repeat of that. Milam was a dear friend to all of them, but she does not know if they can come to her aid. If their lord becomes triggered again, the least that she could do as a friend was warn her. The other people inside the room nodded their heads in agreement especially Cherries. Milam's shoulders slumped in defeat. She does not even know why she was angry in the first place. She can't explain how she feels. It's like when someone tried to steal her food. But it's more intense. I think I need time to process this. I'll leave for now. With that quick response, Milim left. Voldora on the other hand, stood and tapped Xian's shoulder. Yes, Voldora-sama? Xian asked. Please do not report this to Ramuru Xian wants to ask why. But she knows she's not in any position to decline such an order. She just nodded and bowed before she left to attend to her duties. You can say that she's also still a bit bitter about their relationship, but Xian knows her place. Being allowed to be by Ramuru's side after what she's done is enough for her. When Milam came back free was ready to scold the shit out of her. But she did not expect her to be sad. She's normally in high spirits whenever she comes back from Tempest. Milam, Free tried to call her attention, but Milam just stood still and did not say anything. Free, I feel like I'm not supposed to be sad, but I am because I like him and he doesn't like me. What am I going to do? Free does not know how to respond to that. It's her first time seeing Milam like this. What happened in Tempest? Why don't we sit down first and then tell me what happened? Free said as she guided Milam towards the couch. Milam started telling the story, and while Free wanted to focus on comforting Milam, her mind was racing with this information. Ramuru and the Storm Dragon are mated. What is that slime thinking? Is he trying to take over the world? Was this his plan all along? She wanted to know more, but considering Milam's emotional state, she knows she will not be able to get details from her. Milam, your feelings are valid, but the thing about this type of situation is that you cannot control how other people feel for each other. Milam just sobbed and hugged Free for comfort. They both just sat and hugged each other for a while, until Milam calmed down a little. I guess, you are really growing up you have now experienced your first heartbreak Free stated after a while. Milam seems to think otherwise. I'm not heartbroken. I just can't believe Ramuru will choose that stinky old fart. He could do better Milam said indignantly. Free giggled at Milam's cuteness. She may be more than 2,000 years old, but she's still a child in her eyes. At the very least, Milam's mood seems to be improving. Well, you were not able to talk to him, didn't you? Why don't we go there again and ask for an explanation? As you said, you are still his bestie. He can at least give you an explanation, right? Sniffing, Milam nodded. She left in haste because she was confused and sad, but she wanted to still talk to Ramuru about this. Free, on the other hand, has ulterior motives. She needs to talk to Ramuru about this. Their being a mated couple is a big threat to the power balance within the demon lords, and to the entire world. It can cause a lot of international issues. Before we go, I want you to remember this Milam, regardless of how you feel about him. He is not under any obligation to return your feelings. For sure, he would want your support in this matter, as you are a dear friend to him. So do not cause him too much trouble, okay? 
Milam just nodded, still feeling defeated. Free wanted to make sure that Milam would act properly while they were there. Milam's story is incomplete, but apparently, Ramuru is overprotective of his dragon mate. She does not want them to step on a landmine. I'll go ahead and call for Carrion. Why is he coming with us? Milam asks, confused. We just want to give you moral support, Milam, and congratulate Ramuru as well. Milam just accepted that reason because she's simple-minded like that. Ramuru was tired after a long day of doing rounds and reviewing tons of documents. He can't wait to go home, unlike before. He's extra excited because he knows that someone is there waiting for him. As soon as he walked inside, he immediately looked for his mate. Voldora was on the balcony, reading manga, as usual. Ramuru felt his brain suddenly getting putty. He walked over to where the storm dragon was, and plopped his body on top of him. Tired, Ramuru just hummed in response. Voldora stopped reading and focused his attention on his little lover. He adjusted their position so Ramuru would be comfortable on top of him. He kissed his temples and rubbed his back to soothe him. Voldora thank you for always being here for me Voldora chuckled at the random words of appreciation. He was about to tease him when he heard Seal speak to his mind. Report. Submissive mode initiated. Will transfer success. Duration set. Unknown. Wait what? Seal, what is happening? Master Ramuru unconsciously entered submissive mode, where the other half of the soul bond submits to their soul partner. Meaning, Voldora has not heard anything about this mode ever. This means that Master Ramuru unconsciously gave you full control over his mind and body. He will abide by your will for an unknown period of time. My apologies for not being able to provide any more explanation about its effects. I am currently analyzing the mode to see how long will Master stay in the state. Master Voldora. Voldora was not given a chance to respond to Seal when he felt a dragon energy coming their way. Oh, fuck. The end.